Big Ud. Bing bang. There she is. There's the intro. Am I on key? I can't hear it. We don't get a monitor. We don't get to hear what the audio sounds like. But it's good. Hi. <laughs> hey, everybody. Welcome to the Wolf Den Podcast. The number one podcast featuring the Wolf Brothers. How you doing? Lost Texas. Oh, my God. It's so loud. <laughs> I don't think it is. He said, JK, it sounds good. I hate you. <laughs> hate you, people. Uh, how's it going? Hello. Welcome. We're back. We yeah. took a week off because I took a week off. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> there was a, a potential for a cool thing to happen last week. And it didn't. And it didn't because I didn't do it. <laughs> and and you know what? It'll I deserve ha- a little, you know. One day. One day a cool thing will happen on <laughs> this show. One day a cool thing will Today's happen. Today's not that day, though. No. Today is a regular ass day. Uh, but I it, do too many things. It is a, a day where we will be recapping. Uh, most of the announcements from, I yeah. guess it's Summer Games Fest, the whole thing. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's so much easier to just call this E3 time. Yeah. <laughs> the, well, the void that E3 left. Because, you know, Jeff Keighley did his Summer Games Fest uh, live stream, uh, but then Xbox had their own, and then Ubisoft had their own. And yeah, like, I mean... Like, the, uh, E3 was supposed to happen, yeah. so all these companies had all of their announcements lined up, uh, and had, they had all their showcases lined up, yeah. and they just did them anyway. Yeah. And you know what? A lot of them weren't affiliated with E3 anyway, yeah. so who cares? So that's what we got. We got yes. our uh, we got our Xbox stuff. We, we got, got our Xbox our stuff. Ubisoft. We got Capcom. We could probably just blow past the we Capcom We got PlayStation stuff. two weeks ago. Yes. And that, honestly, best one. You think so? I liked that one the most. Really? Yeah. Because I'm going to be honest with you. I know we talk a lot of shit about a particular third-party company based in in, uh, French Canada. But that one impressed me, too. So I didn't watch uh, Ubisoft. Actually, only watched part of the Xbox One. I I didn't watch... I didn't watch them while they were happening. I had to go back and like any of the trailers that interest me from the descriptions, like I actually watched. Yeah, I so, I went through. I think The Verge has the yeah. best like breakdowns. Like like uh, see, I I didn't put The Verge in. I put Polygons in because The Verge oh, Polygons did, good. Polygons good. The Verge didn't list everything. Okay, maybe I missed some. Yeah, I just noticed The Verge uh, linked to YouTube videos. Yeah, and I like that because IGN, I, I I got YouTube Premium. Yeah, I don't need to watch ign's ads yeah you know <laughs> just give me because why is ign putting an ad on a trailer because you have to use their proprietary uh video player and you probably have to sign up for ign premium or whatever they're calling it it's nowadays. so stupid it's pretty so i like that it just links a youtube video because i have premium i don't get an ad i can just watch what i came there yeah. for okay uh so- then i guess i shouldn't tell you that the summer games fest link is an ign link <laughs> that's, that's annoying <laughs> I'm annoyed, <laughs> but Summer Games Fest. You know, we're gonna get it. We're gonna get into each one one at yes. a time. Yes. Uh, Summer Games Fest did not blow me away. Yeah, there were some good announcements. There were some games that I actually got excited for, but mm-hmm. overall, it just felt very like bog standard. Here are some games. Yeah, it felt like this is what Jeff Keighley can get. Yeah, <laughs> like there was some big announcements, but yeah. nothing. Again, nothing that really blew me away. And I gotta be honest. When Sony made their announcement, I was blown away a couple times. Yeah. So what do we what do we start? Oh, we can't start with Summer Games Fest. No, we're a week late, but that doesn't mean we're not going to tell you about the free games you can get this month if you're subscribed to PlayStation Plus, Xbox Live Gold, and, and Switch Online. And ah. Switch Online. We always start with uh, PlayStation. For yes. Some uh, f- I think because they were the first ones to give away free games. Really? Yeah. Oh. Is it because the network went down yes. and they were like, here's some games? And the then they were like, we'll just down. do this all the time. The network went down. They, it's like, here's some free games. We're sorry. And then, and, and then yeah, they're like, oh, that was a big hit. Let's just keep doing it. People love doing that. Yeah. People love the free games. Let's give them more. All right. So uh, these games have been available since June 6th. You got NBA 2K23 for the PS4 and PS5. You got Jurassic World Evolution 2 for PS4 and PS5. And Trek 2 Yomi for PS4 and PS5. Oh. I have that. I have not played that it. That one I'm excited for because I actually want to play that game. 
I played it a little bit at a convention and I sucked at it. I yeah. was so bad. But uh, I have it now. So I, I should. I, well, now, I mean, everybody Speaking has of it. games I played at a convention and sucked at, uh, Jurassic World Evolution 1, I played at a convention and sucked at it. Uh, that is the game that doesn't understand the whole point of Jurassic Park. <laughs> because Jurassic World Evolution is the park management sim where you have to try to keep the park running. And the whole reason why Jurassic Park is fun. It's because the park fails. Yeah. I mean, well, that's it's built into it, isn't it? Like, if the park fails, that's, like, the fun part. Yeah, but it's like, y- you lose the game if the park fails. You're not supposed to let the park fail. The whole, the whole fun part about, like, Roller Coaster Tycoon and stuff is yeah. deliberately yeah. making the park fail. Right. <laughs> and NBA 2K23, the latest in the NBA 2K series. That's kind of crazy. Why, that is, is there a new NBA coming out? I mean... I guess they're, they're theoretically we're due for NBA 2K24, but probably not until later in the year. Interesting. Yeah. That's weird. That's weird that we're getting the latest sports situation. Yeah. Uh, what's this uh, Xbox going on here? Uh, f- all month long, you get Adios, and uh, from the 16th to July 15th, you get The Veil, Shadow of the Crown. Hey. I've never heard of either of these. Nope. Xbox is really going down the tubes. We thought we had a good one when they did episode one racer. I'm like, okay, maybe they're turning this around a little bit. And like, nope. 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 No, they're not. Okay. But we get a rare, a rare guest appearance this yeah, we, month. We got two, technically. We'll oh. we'll start I'm gonna start with um the the uh the free switch game they're giving away for the week because it ends tomorrow. Oh. So from when was it from june 7th to tomorrow june 13th uh you can play nba 2k 23 the entire game oh my god for free if you're subscribed to switch online now you may be saying to yourself well it ends tomorrow i'm not going to be able to play the game in time that's okay because you can buy the game for 90 percent off Holy and shit. you have until june 21st to do so uh, Lucky in the chat says NBA Finals ended yesterday. Oh. So that's what. The, the season's over. So they're so, like, please care about <laughs> yeah, basketball yeah. still. Okay, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Now, is I, this version any good? Uh, The Switch version. Because I think they've had bad Historically, the, the NBA 2K games on Switch have not been good. Right. Um, Maybe this one is different. Maybe that's why they felt confident enough to let you play it for free. Okay. Uh, and give you 90%. Or maybe that's why it's 90% off. Because they're like, we got to make some money back on this somehow. But, yeah, that is cool. Uh, but if you don't give a shit about basketball, that's okay. Oh, wait, okay. hold on. Uh, Jeffrey Sorensen says, claim your My Nintendo po- Platinum points. Apparently, if you just download the game and play the game trial, yeah. you get 100 free Platinum points. Oh. I forgot what Platinum points do. Nothing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. They are useless. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, but anyway, uh, for the Switch Online games, the classic titles, uh, on NES, you get Mystery Tower. Okay. Uh, for SNES, you get Harvest Moon. All that's you, kind of a big deal. All you Farm Sim fans. Yeah, that's like the original Farm Sim game. Yeah. So if you like Stardew Valley and you want to know what it was like to play that 30 years ago, this is your yeah. chance. Uh, and then on the Game Boy, you get Blaster Master Enemy Below and Kirby Tilt and Tumble. So that is a big deal because it means they had to, to do some development. Because yes. Because they had to make the gyro of the Switch work with this this ROM. Yes. And so, it works. It uh, works. Yeah. You just use the gyro of the Joy-Cons to move Kirby around. This wasn't just a... Sim- I mean, it, it wasn't a simple ROM dump. Right. But... I mean, I don't want to give them too much credit. How right. complicated could that be? <laughs> I'm sure it was easier. That I mean, not that it was easy as easy as porting a regular uh, game over, but I'm sure it was easier thanks to the fact that the Switch had a gyro built into it. Yeah. Edward Bova says, Bob, don't forget that Japanese Super Nintendo Online. It's different games uh, because they already had Harvest Moon. Oh. That's interesting. So what game are we getting on the Super Famicom then? What did we get? I'm looking at them now. Uh oh my god. Every, everything's so old. <laughs> uh let's see. I'm on the Japanese Nintendo Twitter. Like I can read it. I can if you give me an hour. 
Oh, uh, well, this is it. But what is the game? It's possible they don't get anything. No, it, they they got something new. They got a baseball game. Uh, f- they've been getting that baseball series. There's like a series of baseball games. That, yeah. that that they have. Yeah, it's like a baseball game. Blaster Master. We have that. Oh wait, it's all at the end there. All right, here we go. Everybody, oh. get ready. Super Uru to Rabe Su Suboru. Nailed it. <laughs> Tower of Babel. Koro Koro Kabi. That's Kirby Tilt and Tumble. Yeah. Uh, and then Neta Neta Fui To EX. That is Blaster Master, right? Yes. Uh, Mystery Tower is Tower of Babel. Okay. So what's Supa? Urato. Urato. Fucking. (laughs) (laughs) Rabes. Boru. Nihongo Josu, thank you, thank you, thank you. Arigato Gozaimasu. All right, well, glad, we, fig- glad we figured that. Yes, <laughs> I could also just scroll to it. It's baseball. It's just baseball. Yeah, I said it was baseball. It's not the baseball I thought though. They get this right. like cute little like anime baseball game every once in a while. Right, right. This is just straight up baseball. <laughs> yes, Japan's pastime. <laughs> Honestly. Baseball is I know becoming baseball. Japan's I know time. baseball is huge in Japan. They took it yeah. from us. Yeah. <laughs> They're appropriating our baseball. <laughs> well, because we got cool sports like football. Yeah. So cool. Yeah. You know, I don't like baseball. Mm-hmm. I don't want to go watch a baseball game. But for some reason, mm-hmm. I'm on baseball TikTok. Really? And I get all these like baseball like plays and and people like yeah. narrating over how cool some of this shit yeah. is, and I'm all I'm all in. I'm very invested for some reason. I'm not like a I'm not a sports guy in general, but I have my favorite teams like with baseball. I like the Mets. I like losers, and so therefore <laughs> I like the Mets. Uh, and I've just been turned on to the Let's Go Mets meme on what is that? YouTube. It's basically like the the most famous one. It's the Kingpin, and he goes, "It's not about the money, Spider Man." It's about the Mets, baby. Let's go, Mets. Come on, Mets. I've never seen that. The best one, though, is the Vsauce one because he goes, Vsauce, Michael here. It's not about the money. It's about the Mets. Or is it? And then the music kicks in. Uh, I've never heard that before. It's so good. Um, also, all right, so that's all the free games, right? Yes. That's everything you can get for with, included with all of your services right now. Yes. Hey, my camera works. Hey. Hi. Uh, let's thank people. Yes. Like Cisco Yeeted. Remember him? Yes. With 29 months. <laughs> Podcast time. Hello. Wolf Feral. I don't remember that <laughs> emote. Oh, that's Zim. Uh, Blackbird. Thank you for the 18 months. Bob, how was Vegas? Have fun. Will, why was there no Will and Wood show last week? Next time, I'm just going to do that. Okay. <laughs> I'm just going to do that. All right. Uh, Vegas was fine. Uh, lost a lot of money. However, ate a lot of food. Had a lot right. of good. Had a lot of good. Had a lot it, of the food you stuff. were, the pictures you were sending do look good. I went to an omakase. Had a lot of sushi. Too much sushi for Hannah. Couldn't, really? couldn't, couldn't do it. That that girl's got to learn, man. <laughs> got to learn. You know what the problem is? We did an omakase in New York. Yeah. And it wasn't a lot of food. Okay. It was like we were hungry after. Yeah. So this time we were like, whatever, you know, it's, we'll, we ate it. We had like a snack before we got there and yeah. shit. We were like, it's just sushi. It doesn't fill you up, whatever. And, uh, it, they just, it, we were wrong. <laughs> we were not prepared for that. You don't think sushi fills you up, but like when you leave the restaurant and you go home, that's when you start to feel it. So, so like there's, uh. There's different tiers of the omakase, you know, mm-hmm. and and the higher tier. I was like, I'm in Vegas. I'm on vacation. Let's yeah. get the higher tier. That is just more food, right? So, 
I wasn't expecting that. But the guy was, you, you have like a, the, the sushi chef is like right there yeah, with yeah. you. And he noticed that Hannah wasn't eating any food. <laughs> and he was like, are you okay? <laughs> and then he's like, the, the, uh, the next one's the hand roll, which is the one that it is supposed to fill you up. Yeah. And he's like, I won't put too much. <laughs> I won't put too much rice in it. Like okay. you, you'll get like no yeah, rice because yeah. that's supposed. It's supposed to be filled with rice so that you it like caps you off. Yeah. It's like this. I'm done after this. But it was very. It was. It was awesome. Um. And then I I hung out with our friend Chris who lives in Vegas. Yes. And he's like a food guy. Mm -hmm. He took us to a Chinese supermarket that had like a like a shanty restaurant in it. Okay. And that was incredible. Right. That was really good. Anyway. Where the hell am I? <laughs> uh, we did Blackbird. We're on yeah. Umbra. Thanks for the 11 months. The boys are back. Hello. Banjo X, thanks for the two months. A-Rod Dragon, thanks for the 21 months. Hey, guys. Bob, how was your vacation? It was good. Went to Vegas. It was good. Jeffrey Sorensen, thanks for the 26 months. Don't mind me just using my free monthly sub from Amazon Prime. Welcome back, guys. Missed you. Hello, Jeffrey. How you doing? Uh, Sleeping Toads TV, thanks for the 24 months. Hi, guys. If the Knights close it out tonight, that's the, the Vegas, Vegas Knights. People. Yeah. Uh, who wins the Consmith? Mas what, what, what language is All this? All right. Now I just think you're making things up. <laughs> Massachusetts or etch? What are you saying? <laughs> Eric, thanks for the 62 months. Jag Racer, thanks for the six months. Hold the Bob, beat the second phenomenon in Tears of the Kingdom, and I am kind of ready to be done. 40 hours is enough for me. I'm right there with you. I'm ready. Just... I did the second phenomenon. I want the game to be over. I'm so <laughs> over the game. I got really frustrated with the Zora people yeah. because you. I, I just. Everybody keeps telling me. Ze like when I say that Zelda is about walking up to people and just right. talking to everybody until you figure out where to go, they're like, "When do you do that?" And I'm like, yeah. "The whole game is that." And they're like, "No, that never happens in the in, in Ocarina of Time. You never have to talk to anybody." Right? That's that's fucking not true. Yeah. The Zora domain is just walking up to a bunch of different people, at, just figuring out where. To right. Go. It's so goddamn annoying. Right. The Con Smith Trophy is the trophy awarded to the MVP. Of the team that wins the Stanley Cup. Oh. Yeah. So not necessarily the winner, just the best player. Yeah. Okay. So and he's asking if uh, Mazur Assault or Icho will get it. Are, th are those people? Yeah. It's hockey, so they all have weird European names. M March Assault sounds like a... Uh... A Kojima name for like a for like a guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, that one. Yeah. Anyway, uh, Will Wolf, damn it. Hey, that's you. That's me. Let's go, best baby. <laughs> okay. This year is their year. This year is their year. I'm sure. Caleb Fox, thanks for the 12 months. Happy one year anniversary. Happy one. Happy year. one year. Where would you like to go for dinner? <laughs> Uh, okay, hey, now that we're almost a half an hour into the podcast, hey, let's, all right. let's, uh, let's do this. Summer Games Fest. Yeah, baby. Um, wait, I'm all out of order here. We're, okay. Okay, we're just going right to Summer Games Fest. Might as well, because like okay. that, that's the big thing. That's what everybody's talking about right now. We have like other news stories and even some stuff from last week, but we'll get to that when we get I'm gonna to I'm going to put week 613 all the way to the top. Okay. So... Click on it now. Uh, it's going to go bye-bye. Okay. It went bye-bye. Uh, and then I'm going to move this here. And then here we go. Summer Games Fest. Summer Games yeah. Fest. Here we go. Uh, IGN article. We love IGN. Yeah. Everybody loves it. Okay. Uh, this is not in order of what was revealed, but it's still pretty much a good overview of what's there. Uh, and they start with Final Fantasy VII Remake Part 2, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Are you telling me we, this, are you telling me we haven't gotten this yet? No. <laughs> No, remember when Final okay. Fantasy VII Remake came out and everyone's like, this is only the first third of the, the original game. And, and, and they were uh, like, yeah. Yeah, it's episodic, <laughs> baby. I uh, do remember that. So, yeah, you see Cloud, Aerith, and the rest of the party riding through the expansive fields on uh, the world outside of Midgar. Uh, Red, Red 13 is joining the party this time around as a playable fighter. It's coming to PS5 uh, early next year. And the big surprise was that this game is going to be shipped on two Blu-ray discs. I did hear that. Yeah. 
That is crazy. I think that, that we makes at. it the first game to be shipped onto Blu-ray discs between the PS3, PS4, and now PS5. What's this Tifa Sephiroth situation? I don't imagine know. she dies instead. That would be nuts. <laughs> Final Fantasy, like, to an outsider, doesn't make sense on a normal day. Right, right. So imagine, like, a remake that, uh, by all extents, is playing with the notion of it being a remake. I mean, I think it looks really good. It does. Yeah. So, whatever. Yeah. Uh, I I hate this. I hate how games are getting bigger and bigger, like, like, yeah. like file size-wise. Like, I don't... Like, it makes sense because there's more to the games now. Yeah. But companies are taking advantage of how yes. much space they're they, they can take up yes and uh it's hard to tell whether or not this game needs two discs it does not or if they're just lazy and don't care about your a blu-ray your disc space. is on average a blu-ray disc is uh 50 gigs for a dual layer blu-ray disc most like especially western games are more than that they're like 100 gigs mm -hmm. But most games only ship on one disc because you just download the rest of it. True. So there has to be a reason. Whatever technical reason we don't understand, there has to be a reason why Square is shipping this game on two discs. So would you rather have that extra 50 gigabytes download over the internet or have it on a second disc? So like... Well, it, it does cost them more money to do it that way. Right. They, they are going a little above and beyond. Well, the be, thing is, that. when you put a game in your PS5, it doesn't play it off the disc. It rips it to your hard drive, and the disc that's is just point. basically for authentication. That. Oh, yeah, that sucks. Yeah. A hundred, two discs into my, and a PS5 only has 180 gigabytes of internal. 180? Yeah, it's a weird number. But it has a, a I thought it had closer to a terabyte. No, it has 100 PS5 internal storage. It's like 900 something. No, I think it's 180. No, no. Did I say 180? I meant yeah. 850. Yeah. 850. Yeah. Is what I is what I meant. Okay. So I, it really does seem like they're doing this for like some sense of prestige. Like this game is so big it had to ship on two Blu-rays. Yes. Which... Uh so it's officially a hundred and uh, eight hundred and fifty, I think, but with the OS and everything, it's you go all the way down to six sixty seven. Yeah. So it's like Yeah, it's not a lot. Not a lot. Yeah. <laughs> but I'll give Sony credit. Very easy to put a, an SSD in. Yes, there. yes, yes. And it's getting easier. And it's getting easier. Because like more and more companies are like making SSDs. I didn't put it in the keep, but uh, the same day, Western Digital announced that they were now making the Xbox expansion card slots, and they were going on sale for good prices, I must say. Uh, the same day, they announced they made a, an NVMe SSD specifically for the PlayStation 5. Oh, yeah. okay. Uh, At a reasonable price. The, I've said this before. The, um, the, the, the Xbox external ssds that mm -hmm. and you need to get their super proprietary one yeah those proprietary ones have been pretty much the same price as the smaller m.2s that right. you would put in like a steam deck yeah so, but those prices are going down right and right. the fact that they're going down but the xbox ones are not yeah is kind of upsetting I also don't know how to shop for those because they're all weird names I've never heard of. Like, what, like it's uh, not like Western. I never see like Western Digital small M.2. Oh, stuff. yeah. It's always like some weird company. And everyone's like, no, that one's fine. Yeah. <laughs> so, and I'm very particular with like, yeah. you know, SD cards and storage and stuff. Right, cause yeah. you Because it's very easy to get a dud. Yeah. Anyway, how did we end up here? Oh, uh, because Final Fantasy is huge. Yes. Uh makes you wonder what part three is gonna be <laughs> i don't think it'll ever come out really because they I think they're can they'll cancel the game after this <laughs> really they're gonna pull a valve <laughs> yeah that's what i think all right we'll see uh next up spider-man 2 gets its october 20th release date october 20th of this year and uh cover art i was surprised by this because they just announced this in the sony yeah event and they saved the release date for Jeff Keighley. That is surprising. Yeah. So. 
Uh, uh, looks cool. Now I finally know around when I'm going to get a PlayStation 5. They also said that uh, Venom is not Eddie Brock. Yes. Now, hi, comic book guy over here. Uh, Venom, ha- the Venom symbiote, the actual like black goo that uh, takes over Eddie Brock, has transferred from person to person. First, it was on Peter Parker. Then it was on Eddie Brock. Then it was on Mac Gorgon, the Scorpion. And then it was on Flash Thompson for some random reason. I I read that. Yeah, but that was was actually an excellent run. That was a very good run. Um, Now it's back on Eddie Brock, except now I don't think it's on Eddie Brock. I don't know. I stopped following Venom. Marvel Comics is weird right now. Point Mm -hmm. is, um, Venom, it has been different people. And it looks like they're going to take a different route for this game. Early online speculation is that Harry Osborn is Venom. Yeah. And and Jeff Keighley even said, yeah, is it going to be Eddie Brock? Is it going to be uh, Harry Osborn? And then he said, it's not, not Eddie Brock. Yeah. Yeah. So I, th- I think it's Eddie. It, uh, it's Harry Osborn in the ultimate comics right now. There's no more ultimate comics right now. Never mind. Yeah. Uh, it was Eddie Brock in the Ultimate Comics back in the day. Oh, that's yeah. that's probably what I mean. Um So, yeah. I just hope... Because they did this shit with Arkham Knight. They said the Arkham Knight is an original character. It's, oh, it's so not a character. Annoying. It's not a character that's appeared before. And then the game comes out and it's Jason Todd. Yeah. There was not a second in Arkham Knight where I thought it was anybody other than Jason yeah. Todd. And then when there was the big reveal at the end, I was like, yeah, obviously. Yeah. Obviously. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, dumb. Uh, anywho, next up, uh, Prince of Persia Lost Crown is coming I'm next year. I'm very excited. This is cool. To hear what you... Uh, really? Yes. I thought look, you would be upset about this. I, so, like, I was at first. I'm like, what okay. is this? I don't understand this. Uh, but then I, they, like, they showed off more of the Ubisoft reveal. And I'm like, okay, I get this. This is cool. I can, I can get, I can fuck with this. I didn't know this was announced at Summer Games Fest. I thought it Summer, was the Ubisoft. It was thing. announced at Summer Games Fest, and then they showed more of it at uh, the Ubisoft okay. thing. Because, like, you got to remember, Prince of Persia is not just what the Sands of Time trilogy was. Prince of Persia, as a series, is just about three things. Platforming, sword fighting, and storytelling. And this has, from the looks of it, it has two of them down pretty well. If they can nail the third one, the storytelling, we got a we got a hit on our hands, boy. <laughs> I didn't know the Prince of Persia existed before Sands of Time. <laughs> that, well, that was like the big one. You know, mm-hmm. the original one came out in like the eighties for like Apple II computers, uh-huh. and then there was P- Prince of Persia 3D. Yeah, that game sucks. <laughs> okay, all right. Um, so yeah, this is cool. I'm excited for this. I th- I think it'll be fun as long as they don't fuck it up. <laughs> So, yeah, I saw uh, some discourse on Twitter mm-hmm. about how uh, this is made by the Rayman developers. Yes. So they only make banger platformers. So, yes. like, this has to be good. So, like, the, the guy was like, why is everybody upset? This is made by developers who only make great stuff. So this will be great. And I was like, people are upset because they've been dying for a new Prince of Persia game. And now they're getting it in a completely different different like yeah type i of think game. i think well you said that you didn't know prince of persia existed until sands of time right i think that's kind of like warps what people think Sa- uh, prince of persia is they think it's sands of time yes uh and not and that it can't be anything else which i think is unfair because the original game was uh more of a metroidvania and this game is also a 2d size rolling metroidvania uh also, I too, mean, I like the type of game that yeah. this looks like. Yeah. Also, too, like Ubisoft announced a Sands of Time remake and has has been like dicking around with it ever since. They changed developers on it. They've been radio silent. I know about you've how been, been very interested in that. Yes, because that was a great game back in the day. And, you know, bringing it back for a modern era, bringing Prince of Persia back in general is something that they should have done years ago. Uh-huh. And they just haven't. They had their chance with the Sands of Time remake. They screwed that up. So I guess somebody over at Ubisoft with a brain was must have been like, we got to do something. Let's just do a Retroidvania type thing. And there you go. I think it looks fine. Like the visuals look fine. Everybody's saying it looks like Fortnite. I mean, that's... The, 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 Kids every, are into everything Fortnite. Everything looks like Fortnite. Yeah. Um, I think the trailer was bad because it showed a lot of gameplay, yeah. but then it showed things that kind of looked like they could be gameplay but they were definitely not gameplay right like like 
you know, like 3D cutscene. Or it, it was, I mean, the game's uh, side scrolling. Mm-hmm. And then they changed the camera angle for these like cinematic cutscenes for yeah. the trailer, but you know that that's not going to be yeah, in yeah. the game. Um, what else? Oh, and then Eric brings up a good point in the chat. Great devs can and have made shit games. Yes. That arcane. was another point. I wanted to bring, yeah, Arcane. Uh, they trusted them to make Redfall, and Redfall sucks. Well, so. I don't know if we're going to get to it, but there is an article about like what actually happens with the development okay. of Redfall. Uh, all right, what's what's uh, we next? We got a lot of games. Yeah, to we go do. Uh, Mortal Kombat One gets a gameplay trailer. Uh, guess what? It's Mortal Kombat. <laughs> Did we talk about Mortal Kombat One? We talked about the announcement. Okay. The the initial announcement. This actually showed off gameplay footage and like some of the story mode. Story mm-hmm. mode looks great. Okay. Story mode looks awesome. Uh, the gameplay looks like Mortal Kombat. Um, they showed off this new feature called the cameo feature, which is basically like a tag team. You select a fighter in like their retro costume and they can come in and like assist you. Is it like Marvel vs. Capcom where they come in, uh, like you hit two buttons at once and then in Marvel vs. Capcom, one of your side characters comes in and like hits them once and goes back. You hit, it's one button. Yeah. And but, it's, and but, the, but it's the same thing, right? They come in, hit yeah. them once and then leave. Yeah. And like you can uh, use that into a combo and like finish it or like in the middle of your combo. Okay. So that's, that, cool. that's really cool. Um, it's going all in with the blood, gore, and violence again, uh, which is something I thought they should probably just scale back just a little bit. Yeah, it's not- it is. I don't know if we're getting older, but <laughs> but like, um, I don't like, like it. I'm like good. Yeah, like, it's, like, it doesn't do anything for me. Like when you when everything is a fatality, like it, it desensitizes you to like the truly like graphic stuff, like what a fatality should be. You yeah. know. I think it's too real now. That like, like it was fun when it was like a cartoon. Yeah, and like I mean, it they it was real. It was pictures of real people back in the day, but yeah, it's but still like there was the that blood was like yeah. a fantasy, and this is like it's just it's just too much. Yeah. I don't need it. I mean, I'm still gonna play it, but yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, speaking of Fortnite, <laughs> okay, uh, they're getting a Transformers crossover. Optimus Prime is coming to Fortnite. Somebody said uh, that's cool and all, but not hearing Optimus talk kind of sucks. It yeah. kind of ruins the whole thing. Yeah, I mean, the voice makes Optimus Prime. Yeah, yeah. but I don't think any of the characters in Fortnite no. talk. No, uh, Any of the uh, Guess licensed characters, characters yeah. besides The Rock. Yeah. Uh, Sonic Superstars is a new 2D classic Sonic game coming this year. Um, it's a four-player co-op game. Uh, you can play as Sonic, Tails, Knuckles, or Amy, um, and it's up to four players can play simultaneously. This is basically new Super Mario Brothers Wii, but with Sonic. I think this will be bad. I I like the idea. A lot of people are going nuts about it. I think it's going to be bad. I am cautiously optimistic for it because tradi- traditionally. Sonic has done better in 2D than it has in 3D. Yes. Yes. Um, it's. I'm surprised that we're getting a 2D Sonic game so soon after Frontiers. Um, True. But at the same time, I don't think it's a bad idea. Well, I don't. Be, it'll be at least a year. Yeah. But I don't think it's a bad idea to like split the difference. You know, do a a modern 3D style Sonic, but also do like a 2D Sonic every once in a while as like a throwback deal, or like to placate fans who pr- prefer the 2d sonic yeah i think that they should split it up like mario yeah like mario gets 2d and 3d stuff yeah. um i i, I think i like the idea but i like 2d sonic i like having a new modern take on a 2d yeah. sonic uh the co-op is very concerning because uh yeah it's it's sonic you're moving fast how, how is everybody going to be able yeah. to keep up what happens if somebody is too fast yeah they haven't shown in the trailer at all if the screen's gonna split like Toe Jam and Earl style or like yeah. Lego style, where like if one person walks off screen, the screen start becomes a split screen. Yeah. Um, is it gonna be like Sonic Two and Sonic Three, where one guy controls the camera yeah. and everyone else just has to be on screen or else you're dead? Uh, also, it is local co-op only. There is no online. Really? Yes. Huh. I must have missed that. There is no online. Hmm. So that's interesting. That yes, that's a very interesting yeah. choice, and that leads me to believe that there is no 
split screen or anything. Yeah. That it's just what you're on screen and that's it. So I, that, that's one of the reasons I'm greatly concerned. For this yeah. Game. I mean, again, I hope it's good. It's, you know, it's just, you know, you know, Sonic, <laughs> you've got yeah, that history. You know, something weird is going to be it the will problem have here. It will have an online battle mode of some sort. But, like, the main game is not going to be online. What the hell does that mean? I don't That's going to be race. That's going to be split screen racing. Duh. Like in Sonic uh, 3. Yeah. Or, 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 you know, what is it, 2 had the racing? 3 was... had the racing. Okay. Yeah. Uh, next up, Alan Wake 2 is coming October 17th. Um, the game has two playable characters, Alan Wake and Saga Anderson. Uh, with a 50-50 split between the two, Saga is an FBI agent in the Pacific Northwest, while Alan is trying to escape from the Nightmare Dimension. Did they show this in uh, the PlayStation event? They showed the trailer. This was gameplay footage. Oh, okay. Yeah. I didn't see um, the gameplay footage. This looks like Alan Wake. <laughs> I think it looks like Resident Evil. Well, yeah. Alan Wake <laughs> had a big Resident Evil vibe going for it. I don't think the trailer did it justice, though, because Alan Wake was a lot more cerebral, a lot more like Twin Peaks David Lynchy than resident evil tends to yeah be. whenever i see i've never played the original alan wake but whenever i saw it it looked like the guy was just walking around yeah and this looked like all action yeah which i think was a mistake because if you want to like drive home what separates this from like your traditional survival horror game especially resident evil they should i mean but that doesn't really gameplay well that doesn't really show off well you know you walking around like picking up book pages yeah not yeah. like that i mean you can make it look like an interesting story. Yeah. You know? Uh, speaking of interesting, Like a Dragon Guy Den is coming in November. Like a Dragon Guy Den, the man who erased his name was officially shown off. Uh, it has an official release date for November 9th. It is a spinoff of the long-running uh, Like a Dragon, formerly Yakuza series, and marks the return of protagonist, protagonist Kazuma Kiryu. Yeah, I don't. Uh, I forgot what the difference is between the, the Yakuza games. Well, Like a Dragon is, is its name in Japan. Yeah. And so after like Yakuza 7, I think, they just started naming them all like a dragon internationally. And uh, Oh, so yeah. I thought it was a different style of Yakuza game. No. So oh. I, I believe Yakuza 7 was called Yakuza 7 Like a Dragon. And now every Yakuza game is just going to be called Like a Dragon internationally because that's what it's called in Japan. Okay. Kazuma Kiyu was the original protagonist. Oh. Of of the Yakuza games, so now we're getting a new game with him, Yakuza. Uh, sorry, Like a Dragon, Gaiden. Okay. Star Trek. Star Trek Infinite. Uh, the game is in development at Quantum League maker Nimble Giant Entertainment. Little is sh shown in the trailer beyond a Federation fleet approaching the Borg, um, <laughs> and it is coming out. Oh, a full reveal is coming June sixteenth. So we will know more about that, nerds. <laughs> Uh, then we got John Carpenter's Toxic Commando. So I've had some conversations with my friends about this game. Okay. Do you think John Carpenter actually had a hand in making this game? No. Or Tom Clancy situation. <laughs> well, John Carpenter's still alive. So <laughs> uh, Saber, Saber Interactive Focus Entertainment probably had a Left 4 Dead style game they were making. And we're like, how can we give some sort of like clout to this game? That's being put into a genre with a lot of imitators. Let's get the master of horror, John Carpenter, to sign off on it. I heard he's like a... He's he, a fucking big time video gamer. Yeah, he's into games. Yeah, he stuff. loves this shit. So when somebody asks him to be involved in video games, he's like, yeah, better than making movies. I, yeah, I wonder what exactly he did on it. I don't he, know. Probably some consulting of some kind. Yeah. I mean, have you ever listened to an interview with John Carpenter? He is ornery in his old age. He will uh, tell you if he thinks something sucks. Very little bit. Like, yeah. I think IGN did a thing where they made him play... Uh, oh, the Labo. Oh, yeah. They made him play the Labo piano. And yeah. he's like, this thing sucks. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, what is this? Sandland is a new action game from Akira Toriyama and Bandai Namco. So we got a new game from the creator of Dragon Ball Z and Bandai called I think Sandland, Sandland is a series. Uh, yeah, based on a niche uh, Toriyama manga from 2000. Okay. Uh, show tank and melee combat across the game's wide desert. No release date. Yeah, so this looks like <laughs> Dragon, Ball Dragon Ball and, and Dragon, Dragon Quest, Quest yeah. and all that stuff. Uh, Pal World is like Pokemon, but with guns. This Okay, so I think 
I so I think I started watching Summer Game Fest around okay. when this happened. Uh, this was awesome mm-hmm. because they showed this trailer and it looks the same as all of the other Power World trailers, but they left the audience mic on during this trailer. Okay. So you heard everybody laughing okay. when the guns came out. <laughs> that was awesome. They, they left the audience mic on for a lot of this stuff. There was one game. They, I mean, it's cool to have the audience reaction when stuff happens on screen. Yeah. But you got the audience reaction when a Pokemon pulled out a gun. Yeah. That like, was I, cool. I think it was the Final Fantasy uh, reveal where it's like, oh, it's shipping on two discs. Someone goes, two discs! <laughs> i love i love game announcement time. yes <laughs> uh next up lord of the rings return to moria coming this fall uh maybe it's a bit too soon for another lord of the rings game yeah i saw this and i was like what the fuck i thought we were done with with no I ha- it kind of looks like Gollum. yeah so i mean we don't have to talk about it right now uh or at all but embracer group uh, the big Swedish conglomerate that just owns a lot of video game companies for some reason. Um, they're going through some cuts. They're laying people off. They are they have to do a lot of restructuring. And part of their plan for the restructuring is just to double down on Lord of the Rings games because they have the license. Oh. So, yeah. We're getting more whether we like it or not. Oh, my God. That sucks. It's, it's incredible to me because Lord of the Rings games actually used to be very good and of a decent quality. Like, even when EA had the license and the Shadow of uh, Mordor games were, like, very high quality. And, like, now the, these guys have it. It's just like, yeah, just Lord of the Rings, baby. <laughs> yeah, this doesn't. I don't. No, this, I don't does, even... this doesn't instill confidence. No. It's a survival crafting adventure. They all are. So, uh, and then we got F- Final Fantasy VII Ever Crisis. Okay, uh, I don't know what this is. Is a compilation of every story told in the Final Fantasy VII universe. There will also be a new story element uh, that focuses on the origins of Soldier. Soldier is in all caps. That's why I said Soldier. <laughs> okay. Whatever that means. Banisher: Ghosts of New Eden is a new action RPG from the creators of Vampire. Uh, Don't Nod brought its new game, Banishers, the Ghosts of New Eden, to Summer Games Fest. Uh, new gameplay footage showed games haunting atmosphere and combat featuring ghosts, wolves, and other apparitions. Baldur's Gate for Bal- for the nerds. Uh, announces Jason Isaacs as a major villain, best known for playing Lucius Malfoy in the Harry Potter uh, movies. And Captain Hook in tw- 2003's Peter Pan is joining Baldur's Gate as a major villain. The actor has also worked in videos before, including Marvel's Midnight Suns and The Last Worker. And then we got Twisted Metal from the show. We're going to yeah, show TV, Twisted Metal yeah. that lo- it, it looked weird. This it, was a weird thing to throw in the middle of the Summer Games Fest. Twisted Metal is a car combat game. So why would your trailer be two dudes fighting in the casino? Good point. Good point. <laughs> Yeah, it. I I didn't even know what what was happening. Yeah. I, I was like, oh, we're getting a new Twisted Metal game. Oh, uh, wait, is yeah. this just like a fun bit? No. Oh wait, it's, it's a, a whole show. It's a whole TV show. Um, we got to see uh, Anthony Mackie's character get beat up by Sweet Tooth, who is so Samoa Joe, the wrestler, is playing Sweet Tooth. Oh, that's who that is. Yeah, but his voice is Will Arnett. That's weird. Yeah, I like why Samoa Joe can talk. He's a very good uh, promo on the mic. If you've ever like watched him wrestle, like talking to the mic, he's great. So why not just have him pull double duty? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, next is Marvel Snap getting a new mode. Cool. Card game. Again, I don't understand that game. Everyone told me it was great. I don't get it. And then we got Call of Duty stuff. Uh, season four for Modern Warfare 2. Uh, th- yeah, they said... Uh, castle soccer stadium and an abandoned zoo i watched the trailer i didn't see any of that hmm. maybe i maybe i missed it i didn't maybe. see a zoo anywhere i don't know i i saw that and i just skipped right past it because like at this point it's all just white noise <laughs> i want to try right. uh, uh call of duty mm-hmm. uh wood and fried biscuits were playing last night uh and uh apparently there's a ranked mode now okay and I f- oh hey I, I said wood and and here he is <laughs> thank you for the raid uh, we're just we're talking about call of duty speak of the devil and he shall appear so they have a ranked mode now and uh uh, uh one of my biggest con- criticisms of call of duty was you were playing against just everybody and like right, you play right, against right. people who are like so much better than you 
Uh, now you play against people who are like more like your level, and that seems more yeah. fair. Um, but then Fried Biscuits was over there saying, I fucking hate this game. <laughs> so, like, I don't know. But yeah, I don't see a zoo anywhere in this trailer. Yeah. Hey, guys, uh, we're uh, uh, coming over from, from Woodstream. This is the other podcast. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, what else do we have? Uh, next up is Path of Exile 2, uh, isometric RPG. Gameplay snippet was short. Um, trailer ended with a tease that we will find out more on July 28th. Then we have Exo Primal, which is a game I'm actually interested in. Uh, and we'll talk about it more when we get to the Capcom stuff. Yes, uh, but they announced that you're going to get a uh, Mecha Ryu in the game. Yeah, this was weird. Yeah, because I mean it's obviously in Exo Primal, but yeah, it, I don't know. It was uh, it was bizarre to see. Yeah, Exo Primal is coming out on July 14th. All right, here we go. Game of the show, Lies of P. I'm actually interested in Lies of P. And yeah. there's a demo. I'll play the demo. Uh. Also, uh, Liza P is coming out. The Pinocchio Souls-like is how they describe it. <laughs> Remember, this is a Pinocchio game. It's coming out September 19th, which is a slight delay from the previous August date. However, players can play a demo of the game featuring the first two chapters, uh, which include three bosses and multiple locations to explore. Liza P demo on the PlayStation right now. I'm going to go. download it to my PlayStation. There you go. That, that's Bob's next stream is Lies of P. The Pinocchio game. The hot <laughs> Pinocchio game with the sexy Pinocchio. <laughs> the sexy anime Pinocchio. God damn it. <laughs> Maybe that's why I'm so interested. All right. <laughs> Add to library. There okay. it goes. Going right to my. Hey, that's a hot Pinocchio. It, right? <laughs> You're not wrong. Yeah. Uh, next, uh, Netflix. What's he lying about? I mean, I need to <laughs> we'll know. We'll find now. out. Uh, Netflix showed off uh, the first trailer for The Witcher season three, which will be Henry Cavill's last season as The Witcher. So he filmed this and then got fired. I think he quit. Depends on who you ask. Yeah. Yeah. He got like forced out or something. Yeah. He... I thought he was done already. Yeah. No. Apparently, like he filmed this, he's like, all right, I'm not, I'm not The Witcher anymore, or like, you're not The Witcher anymore. Whatever it is. Well, I'm blasting through the rest of this. All right. Speaking Warham of Henry Cavill, Warhammer 40K Space Marines 2 co-op reveal. Nicolas Cage is in Dead by Daylight. Neat. <laughs> um, as like a guy, like a guy you, not not the villain guy. No. Yeah, you're like, a, 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 I forgot what they call it. The main character. You're like a good guy. I yeah. Um, yes, you're great. Yes, your grace. Okay. Yes, whatever. your grace. Snowfall. Okay, whatever that means. Witchfire, <laughs> uh, Remnant Two. Uh, we're getting into the weeds here. Yeah. Shit that nobody cares about. Mortals of Avium got, got an extended gameplay clip. Looks terrible. <laughs> uh, Fay Farm gets a release date. Yeah. Uh, we're done. Party okay. animals. People are apparently really excited oh, about yeah, party, party animals. Party animals looks good. But this is just it's just a uh, gang beast. Yeah. I don't know why everybody's so excited about party animals. What's the no. difference between this and Gang Beast? Why should I care about party animals? Because other people are excited for party animals. <laughs> okay. And that's it. Yeah. Oh, and there's a really ugly Xbox. Uh, uh, in Porsche. celebration of, yeah, it's a Porsche collaboration. Yeah. Okay. And that was Summer Games Fest. Yeah. Not to be confused with all of the other announcements yeah. that happened. <laughs> I would say that was one of the lesser announcements this weekend. Honestly, yeah, I would. I like there were a couple... that should have been the main stuff. Yeah, but it wasn't. I feel like you know because Sony wasn't involved and all the other majors were doing their own stuff. Like it kind of left, like not that that was filled with like the the B string companies, but like you know there was there wasn't like as many heavy hitters as there could have been. Yeah, you know. Uh, we're gonna sit here and we're gonna thank Konami Man. Thanks for the. Uh, oh wait, where am I? Duffman. Oh Thanks yeah. For the twenty-one months, uh, best podcast in town. Take that, Duffman knows Wood, his podcast. Take that, Wood viewers. <laughs> uh, the Konami man. Thanks for the twelve months. Have missed the live show for a month due to ha moving house and Bob's vacation. Good to be able to catch it today. Welcome back. Welcome back. Hope you're all good there. Still bald. Me too. Thanks for yeah, the ten yeah. months. Keep up the good work. Thanks, dude. We'll try. Uh, okay. Uh, next up, let's do the Xbox show. Let's do it. All right. 
Uh, first on the docket, Fable. Uh, Microsoft announced in 2020 that Playground Games is working on a Fable game. Uh, and now we got a new trailer. Uh, it's a closer look at what the game is going to be. It starred British actor Richard Adewati and his take on Fable's telltale humor. Uh, it was really just like a, it was more of a cinematic trailer. Didn't really show off that like that much gameplay, if at all. So I'm not interested in this in fantasy like this. Right. But this looked fun. Yeah. It, it was more of like a tone piece because like Fable is known for like its quirky British humor. And like this is more about showing off that like that's going to remain, yeah. which I think is good because like if you lose that, then you lose the identity of Fable. Yeah. So uh, that that's cool. Yeah. Maybe I'll dabble around because you know what? Going to be on Game Pass. Yeah. Most of these games are going to be on Game Pass. Uh, South of Midnight. I don't know this game. Uh, coming to Xbox and Windows PC day one on Game Pass set in the American Deep South specifically. Um, it's clearly a fan- fantasy elements mixed in with Southern setting. So, okay. The tone is macabre, as the the developer says. The animation is uh, purposely, like, two frames a second. Yeah. Uh, I bet you it's going to, despite that, it's going to run at, like, a full 60. Yeah. Uh, Star Wars Outlaws. Lucasfilm Games showed off Star Wars Outlaws featuring a new protagonist in a world overrun with crime syndicates. Uh, Neither Jedi nor Sith. She's living in the gray world of smugglers and thieves. It's developed by Massive Entertainment and a gameplay reveal uh, for the open world story driven game is coming during the Ubisoft forward. So uh, this trailer was awesome. Yes, this trailer was awesome. I like this trailer. Uh, Not to jump ahead, but from the Ubisoft uh, showcase, the gameplay looked awesome. I don't know about that. (laughs) <laughs> I thought that gameplay trailer mm-hmm. was bad. <laughs> really? I don't think the gameplay... I don't think it looks... I don't think the gameplay will be bad. I think that they did a really poor job of showing the gameplay. They did just show off like the basic stuff, like some stealth, some cover shooting, driving section, uh, space They did it combat. all really fast. Yeah. And it looked like it's just... All of the different types of games that Ubisoft has thrown into one. Game. Yes. You know, and that's when I that's, heard Ubisoft was making a Star Wars game, I was like, no, why is it gotta be them? But then you think about every Ubisoft game is just Assassin's Creed but this. Yeah. And Assassin's Creed but Star Wars actually sounds pretty cool. Right? <laughs> yeah, it does. Um But so- the gameplay was shooting and stuff. So it was yeah. like maybe it's not Assassin's Creed but this. Right. But uh, Watch Dogs was Assassin's Creed, yes. but shooting. <laughs> yes. Also, there was a part in the tri- so there was a part where they get into the ship and then they fly right into space. Yeah. It doesn't have the same sort of wow as like it looked like they were trying to do a No Man's Sky thing yeah. where it's like, look, you could just go right into space, but it like. You, you're fl- you just you just end you were just in space. You fly they- through the clouds, which is obviously like the loading screen. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm still excited for it. I still because I don't think we've gotten a game where you don't play as either a Jedi or a starship since Shadows of the Empire. Wow. Think think about it for a minute. Most Star Wars games, you're especially like since you know the late '90s to now, you're either playing as a Jedi mm-hmm. or it's a flight sim of some kind. That's a good point. You know, so. And, you know, like Shadows of the Empire, this game takes place in between Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. Yeah. So it's that, like, whole time frame that's, like, not hasn't really been explored all that much outside of the the main characters. And even then, like, they're they're currently telling that story in the Marvel comics, and it's it's still not done. Yeah. So, you know, this is this is a very interesting time to, like, set a Star Wars game. Um, so it's made by UB. It's being developed by Ubisoft Massive. Yes, they did the Division and the Division Two. Oh, I don't know. Games. <laughs> I don't know if I'm gonna like. Here's this. the thing, my my. I mean, this is Ubisoft. This this is apples and oranges. But like Respawn, you know, made Titanfall, and they were made. That's a company made by ex Call of Duty guys. Right. And then they made a Souls like Metroidvania for Jedi Fallen Order, and that game was great. Right. So my, my problem is that Ubisoft just makes the same game over and over again. Right. So. How am I gonna take this? Like, like this? I I'm feeling like this is just gonna be. I get this is like a Sonic Superstar situation where I'm cautiously optimistic. Right. We have to see 
an extended gameplay session. Like right. we need to actually see, is she going to have to climb towers? Is she going to have to collect random things around the map? Yeah. So I watched this and I watched the gameplay trailer for this just, just now. And then yeah. I, I watched the Assassin's Creed gameplay trailer because it like auto played. Yeah. And I was like, oh wait, let's compare the two. Because this does, this should feel like Assassin's Creed, but Star Wars. And then I was like, oh wait, yeah, there wasn't a lot of free running. Yeah. I would have expected more free running from Ubisoft making a Star Wars mm-hmm. game. Um, but in the trail, in the gameplay trailer, there was like a, like weird, like it was one of those situations where the person showing off the game was like shooting weird. Like, yeah. like they were, they weren't aiming right. It was like, yeah, something was wrong. And then, uh, and then you have like the, the on rails, like, like chase sequence and then the going into space thing. And then, mm-hmm. and then the flying looked exactly like, um, their Star Fox game with the Starlink. Hell Starlink. Yeah. Uh, and I think that game was bad. <laughs> it didn't get that. It didn't. People seemed to like St- Starlink. Yeah. I don't know what the fuck they were playing, <laughs> but that game was not a good game. Right. And this looked like it was that. E- even the there was a there was a dodge. Right. Like which is like the role in Star Fox yeah. or Starlink. So uh, they they're they're taking elements from their other yeah. games i'm i'm very interested i i like i just like star wars so yeah. I, i'm down to, to to dabble in this world especially like you said something that's not a jedi but i'm also a little interested because will yes, have Bob. you seen this this guy in the trailer his name's J J. yeah Lynn. yes no no <laughs> no that is not that is kyle katarn his name is kyle katarn he looks exactly like kyle katarn I think he's 1,000% going to reveal himself as Kyle Katarn. Because this is prime Kyle Katarn time. Yes. This is between uh, Empire and Jedi. Yes. So this is th- this is, this is is when yeah. Kyle Katarn becomes Kyle Katarn. Yeah. You know? So, and I was, after I heard that this guy's name was Jalen, I was like, that is a guy in Star Wars already. And I was looking it up, and the only Jalen I could find was a... Uh, 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 a Clone Wars book, there was a random Jedi named Jalen. <laughs> but in Jedi Academy, the main character's name is Jaden. Oh. Remember the guy yes. he plays? So I was just trying to find yeah. a, connect- a Pepe Silva like connection it, it, to Kyle Katarn. Because it's like, you know, oh, sure, Dave Filoni can bring back Thrawn in his <laughs> stupid rebel show, you know, but we can't get Kyle Katarn in anything. Yeah, I want this to start the the Jedi uh uh outcast spin-off. Yes. You know? That would be great. Yes. Okay. Uh 33 Immortals, Spirit Fairer developer, Thunder Lotus Games debuted its next game. Um it's a 33 player co-op game. What the fuck? I didn't know that. Yeah, all those little champions flood the battlefield together to fight together in a top-down world. That sounds S- awesome. Spirit Fairer I haven't played, but I want to play it. Spiritfarer is a game where you take animals to the afterlife. Yeah. And now they're doing a 33 co-op battle arena game. Yeah. That, this I, I'm interested in that. That okay. sounds really cool. Uh, Payday 3 is coming out September 21st. We got a new gameplay trailer showing off more Payday goodness. So I'm interested in Payday. I, I, we talked about it before. I liked, I, I, I liked the first one and I want more games like this. Yeah. This looks exactly like the like Payday 2. Yeah. I, I'm it just maybe like RTX is turned on, but like the yeah. animations look the same and everything. I don't really know yeah. what the difference is. Apparently not to go back to the Star Wars Outlaws, but that's going to have heists. So you might not even need to play Payday 3. <laughs> Maybe I don't. Uh, Persona 3 Reloaded. Atlas announced its Persona 3 remake a bit too early, leaking its own trailer on its Instagram page. Um, but the announcement was planned for Xbox Game Showcase. The trailer showed off a quick one-minute look at the enhanced PS2 original with P- with uh, Persona 5's visuals, um, thanks to the Unreal Engine. Yeah, I really want to play a Persona game. Yeah. But uh this will be available on Game Pass. This is not the Persona game I'm gonna play. No, everyone says either four or five. I I'm just gonna play five. Unless yeah. they redo four. Yeah. But I don't I'm not I'm, I'm I think Persona Four Golden is on Game Pass already. Yeah, they, they are. Yeah. They they, they 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 I think they all are. Okay. Right, four and five. And didn't they have a th- version of three already? 
No, not on Game I Pass. I thought they did three, four, and five. On what did they do on the Switch? Was it just four and five? Oh. Uh, I don't know. Okay, right. let's go. Let's go. Uh, Obsidian Entertainment is working on a vowed uh, first-person fantasy role-playing game set in uh, Eoria, which is where the popular Pillows of Eternity series takes place. It's another uh, first-person RPG from the people who made uh, Fallout New Vegas, uh, Knights of the Little Republic 2, uh, a lot of people's... Oh, this is going to be good. A lot of people's favorite uh, RPG maker, Obsidian. So, there you go. They, they said it's going to be on the scale of uh, outer... The outer worlds. wild. No, outer world. Outer world. Yes. Outer world. It's going to yeah. be on that sort of scale. Yeah. Uh, sea of Thieves, uh, The Legend of Monkey Island. Uh, sea of Thieves is getting a Monkey Island expansion. Cool. Cool. Uh, Flight Simulator 2024. Uh, pilots can take on jobs like agriculture, ag uh, aviation, helicopter, and mountain rescue, aerial construction, cargo transport, hot air balloon, and air firefighting. Uh, also, coming to Flight Simulator is uh, a dune expansion you can play you can fly the dune ships that looks pretty cool that does look cool we should set that up with microsoft flight simulator in some way <laughs> oh uh, this is the dune the dune yeah part. they do they do cool little they do apps. no it's it's good when they do that yeah yeah um next up senua saga hellblade 2 uh, a lot of creepy voices in Senua's head in the new trailer. Creepy trailer has Senua investigating a wet cave where the voices interrogate her. Coming out in 2024. This is a beautiful game. Yes. Uh, always wanted to play the first one. Never did get to play the first one. Um, Assuming it's on Game Pass. Yeah, it'll be on Game Pass. Uh, like a Dragon, Infinite Wealth. This is the next game in the mainline Like a Dragon series. So what the fuck was the last one? A guy den, a side story. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So okay. this this stars Ichiban Kazuga, who is the new protagonist of the Like a Dragon series. Number one Kazuga. Yeah. Uh, he wakes up on a beach naked. There he is. That's that's all you need to know. Coming out. Some sort of TOS right now. Uh, <laughs> we're coming out early 2024. Next up, Kun Kunitsu. Help me out here. Kunitsu Gami. Path of the Goddess, described as an epic clash between the spirit realm and the mortal man featuring traditional Japanese aesthetics from Capcom. Traditional Japanese aesthetics? Yeah. I'm seeing I'm seeing weird stuff. <laughs> Is this what traditional Japan looked like? I guess. There's like a kaleidoscopic look to it at certain points. Uh, no, I get what they mean. Yeah, it's it, like a, it yeah. could be a thing. Uh, Forza Motorsport, Turn 10's new Forza game is a follow-up to Forza 7 and highly anticipated. It's been six years since the last game was released. Uh, it launches October 10th. Uh, yeah, looks good. Looks like it'll show off the power of X. I always dive into, uh, Forza to test out Game Pass. Yeah. So I'm sure this will be my new Game Pass well, tester. Well, before, you know, Forza games, car racing sims in general are good for, like, testing out, like, visual fidelity. So. Yeah. Also, you can just get in and start playing every yeah. other game I want to play. It's like here's a nine hour cutscene yeah. to, to start you going. You know what I did last night? I played. Was it last night? I played Steep. That was my. Oh, remember that? Yeah. I used that because it was part of PlayStation Plus Premium. Yeah. I used that to just get into the game because right. there's no like cutscene. You just it just drops you in, and it was good. I yeah, I heard that, that was good. I wanted to play that. Uh, Next is Overwatch Invasion, which is incredibly confusing because they just said they weren't doing a story mode, but here is a story <laughs> mission. Uh, yeah. And Game Pass Ultimate subscribers can unlock six new heroes, legendary skins, and in-game cosmetics coming August 10th. Interesting. Uh, Persona 5 Tacticia. It is a spinoff to Persona 5. It is coming November 17th. Um, it's more like a Fire Emblem or XCOM type game. Weird. Yes. Those games are always weird. And Starfield. Starfield got a big old like, it got, it got hour a, long. It got a little thing in the middle of the showcase. Then it's got its own thing at the end of the showcase. Oh, this is just the little thing? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's all it's all the same fucking thing. It's Starfield. We got an extended gameplay footage. It is Elder Scrolls or Fallout in space. I'm gonna play it. I'm interested. Um, 
There is so it's confirmed to be 30 frames per second. Yes. So therefore this game sucks. It is the worst game ever made. It should die in a fire. I think that there is no world where this game runs good, period. <laughs> people are saying oh i'll just get it on it looks like i'm getting this on pc because i it'll be uncapped on pc right do whatever you want it's going to run like ass on pc todd howard said this is the least buggy bethesda game they will ever ship that's where's the bar yeah with bethesda games skyrim was bad when it launched like people forget skyrim was buggy as shit when it launched yeah and it took a while for it to get better. I, I think that back then we were less willing to put up with any bugs because there were no updates, really. Right. Uh, well, Sk- Skyrim was the end of the 360 era. Mm-hmm. So there were patches. There were updates. Yeah, but like we were just getting into that okay. sort of thing. I think that uh, we were willing to put up with it. Uh, or, no, I'm sorry. We were less willing to put up with bugs. So there were bugs in Skyrim, but if that game came out now with the same sort of bugs, we'd be like, this game great. Yeah. Well, but now, you... now you got, you know, uh, what are they other? They had Fallout uh, 76, 76, which didn't work half the time. Right. But like you got games like Jedi Survivor, which is like reviewed very well, but like was a mess at launch. Yeah. People did not stand for it. Yeah. But I think that that was worse than what Skyrim was when it launched. Right. You know? So, I mean, look. Because Skyrim had some things where, like, you clip through a wall. Right. You know? And it's like, all right, don't go to that wall. Jedi uh, Survivor Survivor is like, you just can't play the game (laughs) at some points. Like, it runs at a a frame a second, you know? And there's nothing you can do. I think if this... There was a... Was it Jedi Survivor that had a a game-breaking bug in the middle where you just couldn't progress? Or was that Gotham Knights? There was a there was a that, game oh, recently I know where what, you could not. Progress. I know what you're talking about. I don't remember. It might have been Survivor. That's it what that's have, what yeah. I'm talking about. You know, like the bugs are buggier now yeah. than they were back then. Of, uh, like this is not like a fast paced game. This is not a Twitch based game. If if getting the game to run at 30 is what it takes to get it workable at all, that's fine. And that should be fine. Not every game needs to be 60. What a game needs to be is stable and consistent. See, I agree. I just don't think this will be stable either. I think that it's 30 and then there's going to be some problems. And it's going to be worse on PC. <laughs> That's what I think. Okay. And people with, with you know like high-end PCs with really expensive graphics cards are going to be very disappointed right. when they get this thing and it can't run at their 120 frames a second. Oh, maybe want. don't spend ten thousand dollars on a game PC. Just it is five really dollars. like the worst investment you can make right now yeah. is spending so much on a gaming PC because yeah. r- especially right now the lower end cards are performing better than the more expensive yeah. cards <laughs> for some weird reason. Right now the the more expensive like forty nineties mm-hmm. do worse four K than the 30 series yeah and they're you know more expensive than the newer ones it doesn't make any sense what's happening with pc gaming right now luma lee j in the chat says people are speculating the reason why it's 30 frames a second on consoles because of cpu hardware limitations on the xbox series x and s if they make starfield 60 frames a second then they would have to scale back content stuff happening in the game that isn't related to graphics which they don't want to do yeah yeah, they want it to they want to make this game, they want to put everything they can into this game and they want it to look good. They want it to be at 4K. So, if that's if putting the game at 30 frames is what it takes, then that's what they're going to do. Yeah. You know, yes, they could have made this game a 1080p game and it could run run at 60 theoretically, but then everyone would be mad that it was a 1080p game. Why yeah. am I why am I playing this on a Series X if it's not well, 4K? People want the option to to have a performance mode. Like, give me 4K 30 or 1080 60. Okay. Which I think is reasonable, but I think that 1080p 60 might be more taxing than even a 4K 30. Like, it, I don't th- I don't think it's 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 a one to one comparison. I, I think it's apples to oranges. When you give people the option to do one or the other, like then it's a non issue. But if you give people one option. Then there, then then there's a problem somewhere. Yeah. Either the frame rate's too low or the resolution is too low. Yeah. Then the game sucks. Then it's, you know, then the system is bad. 
then this, then this, then this. And, and then it just leads in a tailspin of like negativity that you wind up making up in your head. Mm -hmm. You know, it's how we get the Snyderverse cult. <laughs> I think that Starfield looks good. I'm interested in it. I like all of the stuff that they showed off. Um, you can steal a sandwich from everybody and just put it in your sandwich room. You can't do that. Room? At, you can't do that at 60 frames per second. <laughs> The gunplay looks like friggin'. Apparently, they got uh, the team at id Software to help them with that. Really? Yeah. Because it looks like shit. It looks, <laughs> it looks like Bethesda shooting, you know? <laughs> I saw people were upset that this doesn't have the VATS system from Fallout. I don't know what those people are on because A, that's a stupid system. <laughs> and B, it's a, not a Fallout game. Yeah. It's a different game. Yeah, like you can't, ex like at least Bethesda is making their games different. You have Elder Scrolls, which is high fantasy, which is mostly swords and bows and arrows. Then you have Fallout, which is post-apocalyptic, which has guns. And now you have Starfield, which is in space. <laughs> and it's got... You know, different kinds of guns. It requires different kinds of shooting mechanics. I think that the VAT system only made it only made the cut from from two to from Fallout two to Fallout three. Like, I mean, it was called the VAT system in three, but it, they had like a similar thing in in in. Well, previous Bethesda games. Did, the Bethesda didn't make Fallout uh, games before Fallout three. I know, but yeah. there was like a you pick which limb well, to shoot or whatever. Well, because it was a top down game, right? So they wanted to try like do something similar in a 3d space no they wanted to do the only the only reason it made it over is because the shooting in fallout 3 is ass yeah. and they were like How, i guess we can just streamline the shooting if we keep the system where yeah. you pick a limb anyway right. i think the shooting will be fine but i wasn't very i was the the trailer wasn't very convincing yeah uh, I was getting some uh, No Man's Sky vibes with them over-promising stuff, but I yeah. think that Bethesda can deliver on the stuff. Yeah. So I'm not too worried about yeah. that. I am just I just don't see this thing running very good, especially. Apparently it's going to have like thousands of worlds you can explore. I'm yeah. sure they'll all look the same. Uh, allegedly, they're going to be like procedurally generated or AI driven because that's the new buzzword now. Um, I don't know how well that's going to work because like when you do that, there's like either things start to repeat because they're all the same or like there's no consistency to anything things will break for yeah. sure uh but we'll find out september 6th um it comes to game pass and it'll be on series x and pc we'll find out the month after yeah because that game's not coming out september 6th. you don't think so no that game will come out a month later okay uh jusant uh it's don't nod's next game it's an exploration platformer uh, with an emphasis on climbing. It's coming out the fall of 2023. Cool. Uh, Still Wakes the Deep. Uh, secret Mode in the Chinese Room's uh, new game. Uh, coming out early 2024. Uh, Dungeons of the Hinterberg. Uh, this looks cool. Skateboarding on a blade, journaling, and puzzles. Uh, coming out 2024. I like I like the aesthetic here. That looks uh, cute. A Cyberpunk 2027 Phantom Liberty got a new trailer of... It stars Idris Elba as a law enforcement officer in the new United States of America, and Keanu Reeves is back. It is scheduled for launch uh, September 26th, uh, and it will be $30. That's pretty cheap. People are saying that that's pricey Why? for what is essentially like an expansion pack. It's, pr I mean, it's got a whole new celebrity guy. Yeah. So, like, that... it. I got the impression that this was like a like a whole new campaign. Yeah, it basically is. It's a whole new city, a whole new section of the city. You know, it's got all new missions. It's a whole big. It's an. It literally is an expansion pack. It expands the world of Cyberpunk. If this is six hours minimum, I think that's worth thirty dollars. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Skylines Two is coming October twenty fourth. Uh, Metaphor, uh, Refent. Refantasio nailed it. This is uh, uh, Sega Atlas, I think. Yes, it is from the creators of the Persona series. Uh, write your destiny and rise above fear as you step into a fantasy world unlike anything you've seen before. Fraught with unsettling mystery, the kingdom stands on a precipice. Now you must embark on a journey overcoming obstacles and foreboding bonds with friends. Uh, Nintendo Stan? Uh, I, uh, oh. That's a good name. Uh, <laughs> says the trailer for the cyberpunk thing says Wolf Den. 
it, that that it, does it, it does yes. I was hoping people caught on, but I was watching it live on YouTube, yeah. and when he said that, I I, I I logged into the Wolfden account and wrote, "What?" <laughs> uh, Towerborn is a game. <laughs> yep. Uh, okay. Uh, Clockwork Revolution is not Bioshock. It is a steampunk game from Inexile Entertainment, set in an authoritarian city where you have to change the past to control the future. Um, it looks like Bioshock Infinite, but I, it's not Bioshock Infinite. Yeah, I'm upset about this because I know that they're making like new Bioshock. I yeah. know that they're also they're working on like a spiritual successor to Bioshock yeah. or something. Uh, and this is neither of those. This is a completely different thing, even though it looks exactly like Bioshock Infinite. Yeah. So I don't I, I'm very confused. Yeah. Uh we'll see. Uh and lastly, the Xbox Series S is getting a new one terabyte model uh in carbon black that's cool i yes. think the series s is a great console yes um i don't think i don't agree with making it black though why not because i think they had a good idea with not just making the systems different shapes but different colors because that easily signifies a different it easily differentiates the two on site. You know, like black means it's the X and white means it's the S. Okay. Now that both of them are black, uh, basically the color now signifies the hard drive space. I think it's fine. It'd be nice if there was a white X. Yeah. Uh, I, I think the shape is different enough. This is the big rectangle. This is the thin rectangle. Yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I don't know. That's just my little like dumb semantic thing about it. Otherwise, right. I think it's a good idea. It's 350 bucks, so it's not that much more expensive to get a terabyte. You kind of need a terabyte for this system. Yeah, there's no disk. Yeah. So, yeah, they they need you need the space. Yeah. Uh I think the value is, is a little limited now because uh part of the the best sell of the series S is like you could play all the same games. And it's just three hundred dollars. Yeah, like that's such a good value. Well, what's a One X? Five hundred dollars. It was a Series X. I should. Oh, say. Series X. That's yeah, five hundred dollars. Five hundred dollars. Yeah. yeah. So okay, so you're still like far away enough from because if it was only fifty dollars more for the Series X, then like this price is stupid. This will go down probably this holiday. Yeah, we're gonna see three hundred dollar. Yeah. carbon black series s's because uh the series s is always on sale there's always a weird yeah. deal um okay that's the xbox showcase i think it was okay i think it was i think it was a better than the summer games fest showcase okay um because it showed more interesting things uh still wouldn't say it was like a home run right right so but it was a solid double uh T baseball <laughs> mets <laughs> T-Bird, thank you for the subscription. Let's... We got two more showcases to talk about? I mean, we can just skip the Capcom showcase because they showed nothing of note. Wait, let's go... Th we don't have to go through every little thing, but uh -huh. I want to look at it because okay. I glanced at it and I was pretty disappointed. Yeah. I mean, the big thing was Dragon's Dogma 2, uh, but you got... Um, Kunitsu Gami again. Uh, you got Ace Attorney Apollo Justice Trilogy. Yeah, so that is just they're porting Ace Attorney games. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you got Ghost Trick Phantom Detective, which is um HD remaster of the the DS game. So I did look through this. There's Pragmata. Yeah. This game that looks like a Kojima game that's not. Yes. Somebody in the chat reminded me we did talk about this when it was first announced on a Wolf Dead podcast. Um, because the tra the first trailer they were in like Times Square and did yeah. a weird oh, that's type right. thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it looked really cool. Yeah. Apparently this and this trailer also looked really cool. Yeah. For the minute that it lasted, and then at the very end they said, "We're sorry for our Pragmata fans. We are indefinitely delaying the game." Yep. So they had a minute long cool trailer, and then they were like, they were literally just announcing that the game is never coming out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh. Then there was a uh, Exo Primal, which looks good. I, I'm I'm actually interested in Exo Primal. I think the problem is it's a dinosaur shooter that features a predominantly a girl with red hair, so people just want Dino Crisis to come back. Well, I mean, you pick your character, right? 
But they keep showing off a girl with red hair fighting dinosaurs, which was maybe, the premise of Dino Crisis. Maybe it is. Maybe we'll find out. It. Maybe it's a Calcutarian situation. Maybe. There was something that really interested me about this. I think that it you could play with a lot of people. Yeah, I think it's supposed to be similar to Earth Defense Force. It like Capcom, Capcom's in because Earth Defense Force is just like it's a big you shoot a bunch of bugs. Oh, like horde. Yeah, yeah. So, but this is that with dinosaurs. What's the player limit? Like, how many people can you play as? I, uh, I don't know. Oh, and there's a beta happening. I think. Yes. Is this the game where you play with a lot of people? I think so. It's a multiplayer game. It is a multiplayer game, but are yeah. you limited to four people, or do you do you get to play with more than that? I don't know. Uh, yeah, no, I think so. This so this beta is this weekend. Yeah. So I'm gonna try it. And uh, then yeah, Dragon's Dogma Two was the big announcement. Yeah, not a not a great showing from yeah. Capcom. No. Um, also, like I know Final uh, uh, Street Fighter Six just happened. Yeah. But like. Couldn't have touched on it. They, they, I think they should announce us... characters, but like none of them were cool. <laughs> <laughs> they showed off uh, Resident Evil Four VR for PS VR Two. Is the same thing we got at the PlayStation Showcase. Okay. So, yeah, not a good showing for Capcom. It was like, why are you here? <laughs> yeah, that would. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, so Ubisoft. Yeah, let's talk about Ubisoft. Okay. People in the chat are saying Exo Primal is 4v4. Oh. Wait, I see two teams of five. So who's the fifth man? According to Wikipedia, two teams of five. All right, whatever. All right. Um, Avatar, Frontiers of Pandora. This is just Far Cry in Avatar land. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean... Look, pe- people like Avatar. We've established this. Like, Avatar is apparently not a flash and pan. This is a big deal. People like the blue people. I don't... I've never met a single person that... I don't know what... This feels like manufactured to me. I've never met a single person that's like, yo, Avatar is great. I, but the thing is, like, how does how do two movies 13 years apart make a billion dollars? I... It feels like a... It, it just feels like a... <laughs> like a prank? Yeah. Like 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 a like a hoax. Like Like, where are these people coming from? I don't know, man. You know, it's you know what it is. It's international because these these are movies that do well in like internationally. It has to be that. It has but, to be that. You know, like look, man, Nickelback sold a lot of records. <laughs> Have you ever met a Nickelback? Yeah, who are well? Those are people who are in hiding. Yeah, you know. <laughs> um. So yeah, there's that. There's X Defiant, the Tom Clancy Smash Brothers, as the game as uh Polygon called it. I watched somebody stream this game. Yeah. Because I was interested. I was like, can I play as Sam Fisher or what? Yeah. Uh. I don't I don't get it. Yeah, I don't I, don't, I don't get it. It just looks like Call of Duty. I thought it was gonna be like what you said, Tom Clancy Smash Brothers, yeah. or at least uh like a Fortnite situation. I think it's I think it's supposed to be a Fortnite thing, but like the Ubisoft Tom Clancy take on it. Also, I don't think you play as characters from the franchises. I think you just make your own character and you have stuff from the other franchises, yeah. like the like the Sam Fisher goggles. Yeah, or like the Ghost Recon mask or whatever. Yeah, I... I don't know. I feel like th- 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 there was something there with the concept, but this just yeah. looks like Call of Duty. It's very strange. Uh, Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown. We touched upon that already. Yeah. Uh, the Division Resurgence. Nope. Uh, okay. Wait, what is the Resurgence? Free to play mobile spinoff. Okay. okay. All right. Uh, Skull and Bones. <laughs> Finally, somebody, uh, so I saw somebody talking about this on Twitter. I think the guy from uh, Digital Foundry yeah. said that uh, since this game was first uh, announced or started or something, uh, there have been 19 uh, Sucker Punch games or something. What? Like, oh, let, me, let me see exactly what he said. Or Insomniac game. All right, you look that up. Yeah. I'll just say uh, the pirate game will uh, get a closed beta on August 25th to the 28th. Um, news that Ubisoft announced alongside a, sh- a sea shanty from 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 Home Free, and they said E3 was dead. Uh, <laughs> <coughs> yeah, Wait, uh, they did a sh- sea shanty about how E3 is dead. No, as it was a separate thought in the same sentence. Uh, okay. Um. Yeah, the uh, people were expecting a release date, didn't get one. Um good luck if this game actually comes out. 
<laughs> yeah, no, this game has been in development for a long time yeah. and has made a lot of changes. <laughs> yeah, I'm surprised. It really is surprising that they have not canceled it yet. Yeah. But. Okay, so John Lineman, 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 tweeted. Uh, I actually looked into this and in- including their VR stuff, Insomniac has developed and released 19 games since Skull and Bones started development in 2013. Wow. Think about that. <laughs> Think about that. All right. Uh, the Crew Motor Fest, the third entry in Ubisoft's racing series, is coming out. Uh, it'll be set in Hawaii, coming out September 14th. Uh, have a closed beta July 21st to the 23rd. Cool. Assassin's Creed Nexus VR. Oh, God. Uh, Assassin's Creed Mirage. Uh, we got gameplay footage for it. Um, it is closer in line to the original Assassin's Creed games before Odyssey and Valhalla and Origins. So it's less of an RPG, more of just a parkour game. Yeah, I saw some of this gameplay and I was interested. Yes. It looked pretty cool. You know, because it looked like a back to basics Assassin's Creed. Yeah. It didn't have any of the RPG elements. It didn't have uh, an unnecessarily large map. Yeah, too much it, other it, stuff. Yeah, it on. didn't have boat stuff. Yeah. It was just Assassin's Creed. I'm, a- I'm actually interested in this. You're looking at this trailer and it's like, I think a lot of what you lose when you have an open world style game, like that's yeah. massive, is uh, the level design. Yeah. Like, like, like n- when you get like a big open world stuff, you get like little pockets of like yeah. levels. Like, like here's like an outpost and then the outposts are designed in a way yeah. where you like start the mission here and, and whatever if it's a little more linear it they can design the environment around the gameplay a little right. better uh so i'm not saying this is a linear experience but it, right. it's smaller than they can make it designed a little a yeah. little better they can curate it a little better uh, and that it, this looks like that this yeah. looks pretty cool so I'm, but i won't play this i will play the star wars version yes yeah, star wars outlaws with uh assassin's creed mirage is coming out october 12th uh for Last gen systems and current gen systems. Interesting. And then of course uh Star Wars Outlaws. Yep. Uh we talked about that already. Yes. Oh, that was the last one. Okay. Yes. Cool. Uh and then is that the all the showcase? That was it. Wow. Yeah. So who won? We won. The gamers <laughs> won. Uh I, I I think my favorite might be Star Wars Outlaws. Yeah. Um Xbox had a good showing. Xbox I, had a good showing. Ubisoft had a surprisingly good showing because it's Ubisoft. I was not expecting much. True. From them. Yeah, I was expecting nothing. I was expecting crap. Did Capcom, you say crap? Capcom had trash. Not even bothered. Yeah, Capcom. why were we why were we there? Yeah. Um Yeah, Summer Games Fest was like okay announcements. Yeah. I th- honestly think that PlayStation had the had the most interesting stuff. Uh to an extent, yeah. I didn't think they had a bad showing. Like a lot of people like hated the PlayStation. Yeah, companies. I don't really get that. I came yeah. out well, you know what? It's just usually they have a lot of RPG stuff. Yeah. And there wasn't that many. And also, that's why I liked it. They didn't show like any of like their classic franchises either, the Sony in the Sony showcase. Yeah, I guess so. So they had like a lot of new stuff. New and... stuff, a lot of the multiplayer stuff that they've been like mm-hmm. touting, which nobody's interested in. So uh okay. Yeah. Now we get to talk about other things that happened. Yes. Let's curate this spe- specifically. Let's talk yeah. about uh this uh Nitro deck. Okay. Because uh that was announced at Summer Games Fest. Yes. I'm assuming that they paid for the advertisement. And they must have. Where'd it go? I deleted it. Oh, I see it now. <laughs> this is just a a grip for the switch that turns the switch into something that more resembles a steam deck yes uh the nitro deck acts as a joy con replacement and grip for the switch fitting perfectly around the sides back and bottom of the hybrid console with an ergonomic design shell uh replacement joysticks and the promise of zero stick drift it's a sounding extremely tasty uh this is from nintendo life um it looks the part two there are seven different designs for the nitro deck uh, with two crystal colored shells in collaboration with limited run games, one that looks like an SNES and one that looks like a GameCube uh, color scheme. 
The latter two are part of the company's nostalgia collection. And while you can go more classic with uh, black or gray, of course, uh, there's, come on, GameCube style. Yeah, so I pre-ordered this. Uh, yeah. Uh, so it's a little confusing. There's just the, the generic like black, white, and gray. Yeah. Uh, then there's ones that come with a case. Right. Which is the GameCube and the SNES. And then there is also the limited run clear ones that also come with a case. Right. I pre-ordered the limited run purple because why not? Yeah. I am a little uh, weary of doing that kind of stuff. Because usually the generic looking ones ship first with stuff right. like this. Well, at least that's how it is with like handheld with like the Chinese handhelds. And right. I'd assume this is kind of similar. I mean, if it's a conjunction with limited run games, there's probably so there's probably like a little bit more. I don't want to say professionalism, but a little bit more like consistency with like the releases. I don't know stuff. about that. I think limited run just slaps their name on things. <laughs> uh, now they're owned by Embracer Group. That's true. Oh boy. Uh it features remappable remappable buttons and low latency. Um uh, pre-orders are open now. Prices go from sixty dollars for just the deck to ninety dollars for the deck with a carrying case. Expected to ship September eighteenth. It's kind of pricey. Uh, yeah. the back is what really looks like a Steam deck because it's got the four back buttons. Yeah. Um so and it also has like, yeah, interchangeable thumbsticks, whatever. Um it's kind of it is kind of pricey ninety dollars. I watched the IGN like 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 breakdown of this. Uh-huh. Um, they spent a long time talking about this like verification functionality where you get an app and you scan yours and it'll tell you that it's one of it's like the fifteen hundredth uh, printing of of of, yeah. of this special. It seemed like an NFT thing. <laughs> without the nft part yeah you know like it seemed like they were like maybe we'll not go that far into nft yeah uh it seemed v- very stupid uh i'm not sure how you're gonna be able to remap the buttons i think it's through that app yeah which would be cool yeah i'm, I'm down for that uh but i'll see when i get mine yep we'll make a whole video out of it okay uh next what are we doing next oh Let's talk about the McDonald's Game Boy. Yes. Game. The McDonald's Game Boy game. Yes. Uh, although he started life as a villain in McDonald's cinematic universe, uh, the Grimace has come around and spent the most of his 52 years as one of fast food chain's most endearing yet confusing mascots to help celebrate his birthday. Uh, McDonald's has commissioned a brand new Game Boy Color game in 2023 starring the milkshake obsessed purple piece of candy corn. Uh, we think he's candy corn. Uh, we think he's candy corn. What the grimace is exactly isn't entirely known. McDonald's has alternatively claimed he's the embodiment of a milkshake or a taste bud, but he's <laughs> definitely turning 52. So in addition to the fast food chain offering a grimace birthday meal, which looks awful, um, the mascot is finally starring in his own video game straight out of the late nineties. Wow. I have it on a game boy. It's a Zelda ROM on the back. That's I mean it's an ever drive, basically. Oh, okay. Um but the ROM is available for yes. download on archive.org. Yes. You can just get the ROM and it legitimately runs on actual Game Boy Color hardware. It's a Game Boy Color game. Uh Grimace's birthday uh features the birthday boy skateboarding through McDonald Land while collecting purple milkshake and searching for his mascots, his fellow mascots so he can hold a big birthday bash. Is a surprisingly solid platformer developed by Cruel Toys and Gumpy function um, and was created using GB Studio, a drag and drop development tool that makes it easier to create games for Nintendo's classic handhelds. This gameplay they have is horrible. Like the the quality of the recording is terrible. Yeah. But it's a website. You go to a website. Yeah. And you play the ROM through their like 90s looking uh, player. Yeah. Uh, and it's pretty good. I don't know how long it is. I only got to the second level before I stopped. Right. Um, I suggest playing on normal mode because the hard mode is just you have to hold up or down when you grind a rail, and it's just not intuitive. Oh. Did you do hard mode? No, I, I don't know what I pressed. Okay. Yeah. Oh, you're doing cutscenes right now. You yeah. Gotta get, you got to mash through all the cutscenes. Uh, but yeah, no, it's it's actually pretty good. I so mean, yeah, McDonald's made a Game Boy platformer in 2023. Yes. To 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 promote Grimace. So, yeah, I cool. downloaded it and I'm 
injecting the ROM into my Nintendo Switch Online Game Boy Color app. Oh my god, John Damn. Jaded is going above and beyond here. That I mean, you know, we I keep tripping on the McDonald's garbage cans. Yeah, Ollie over it. Well, we hate being advertised to, but you know what? If this is how they do it, yeah, seriously, give give me more of that. Cool. Yeah, somebody tweeted this at me, and I yeah. was and I was like, well, "Are you kidding me?" And then I looked at it, and and I was like, "Oh my god, I can freaking just put it on my Game Boy." Yeah. And then here it is, and it's on here, and you just play. And it's developed really well. It feels just like something that was in the nineties. Mm-hmm. All right, now what do we want to talk about? Uh, uh, what's let's next? do the Embracer Group stuff. Okay. Uh, Embracer Group has announced a a major restructuring of its business, which includes game cancellations, layoffs, and selling or closing studios in an attempt to reduce costs and make business more efficient. The news comes in the wake of the company revealing that a deal that would have been worth $2 billion in revenue over six years fell apart despite Embracer having verbal agreement from the unnamed proposed partner. It will take until March next year to complete the restructuring process. It's too early to give an exact forecast on how many of Embracer's nearly 17,000 workers will be impacted. Um, This is from CEO Lars Wingfor. Um, The actions will include, but not limited to, closing or divestment of some studios and the termination or pausing of some ongoing game development projects. It will also include decreased spending on non-development costs such as overhead and other operating expenses. We will reduce third-party publishing but put and put greater focus on internal intellectual property and increase external funding for large-budget games. It is not yet clear which studios the company will, uh, plans to close or sell. Embracer says that game cancellations are enti- almost entirely for projects that haven't been announced and for, uh, and for which it pro- projects low returns. All announced, signif- all announced significant releases will still be released as planned. Uh, for instance, Crystal Dynamics, which is working on a new Tomb Raider game and is helping the initiative with Perfect Dark, says those projects won't be impacted by the change. Over the last several years, Embracer Group has vacuumed up a wide array of notable gaming companies and intellectual properties. It bought Gearbox for $1.3 billion in 2021. Last year, Embracer acquired Crystal Dynamics, Eidos Montreal, and Square Enix Montreal, which Embracer Group renamed and then closed, in a $300 million deal that included... They closed it? They closed Square Enix Montreal, yeah. Oh, my God. Uh, Yeah, so they own Tomb Raider, Deus Ex, Thief, and Legacy of Kane. Embracer last year acquired the rights to The Lord of the Rings, which it plans to turn into one of the biggest gaming franchises in the world. Um, Good luck with that. (laughs) You're off to a great start. So, so they they purchased all of uh, Square's American st- or Western stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, f- yeah. So, I guess their plan of just buying everyone and farting things out isn't working for them. Apparently, they also uh, Crystal Dynamics is helping with Perfect, Perfect Dark. Dark. Yeah. Okay. And uh, they're supposed to be they're making a new Tomb Raider game that Amazon is publishing. Okay, interesting. Yeah. Th- th- this is sad they also it, it seems like they're just running all of these ips into the ground yeah which is crazy because half of these games aren't even out yet i know embracer group also owns like dark horse comics they own like they own a lot of stuff mm-hmm. it's just like out of nowhere and that's just like all falling apart <laughs> that's sad yeah um all right let's pick like one or two more of the right. stories that you want to get into uh f- well, wait, I just say real quick, the FTC is going to file an injunction to stop the Microsoft Activision deal. They set they set up a lawsuit before, but now they're actually going to like move forward with an injunction that will like definitely like not definitely, but like it will be one step closer to stopping the deal. Oh. Okay. So Microsoft has to like really pull out the big guns to like show that this is not gonna be a problem. Right. But we'll see how that goes. Uh the red fall behind the scenes I'll touch upon real quick. Apparently you know, Phil Spencer said that Arcane wanted to make this game. They wanted yeah. to make not entirely true. The higher okay. ups, the higher ups at Arcane wanted to make this game. They wanted to make a multiplayer online game oh, with like microtransactions and all that nonsense. The uh people actually making the game wanted to make a traditional arcane game, a single player story driven experience. The higher ups said, Well, 
Prey didn't sell very well. Dishonored 2 didn't sell very well. So we got to do what everyone's doing. Dishonored 2 didn't sell? Apparently not. My God. So that's what happened. And when Microsoft bought Bethesda, the uh, the underlings were like, ooh, maybe Microsoft will cancel the game. And Microsoft didn't do shit with the game. <laughs> so that's what happened. Oh, God. Yeah. Not that, a good thing. That's but I think I think the failure of Redfall really opened up Microsoft's eyes. So now they're going to be more hands-on with all their first-party studios. They're, like, their showcase showed that they are serious about releasing first-party games. They're yep. going to try, they said they're going to try to have four first-party games every year. Todd Howard, uh, that's a good, yeah, that's a good number. Todd Howard said, uh, now that they're part of Microsoft, they have access to other developers' yeah tools and stuff. Uh, so he seemed pretty happy about that. Yeah. So uh, and that's what Phil Spencer was was championing when I heard the podcast when he was basically uh, apologizing for yeah. how bad Redfall was. Um. So I mean, we'll see what happens when yeah. when friggin' uh, uh, Starfield comes up. Okay. Uh so what do you want to talk about? I want to talk real quick about the game porting toolkit yes. for for a X for, for 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 Mac. Yes, let's do that. Uh Apple at uh WWDC announced a new toolkit that makes it easier for game developers to port Windows games to Mac. The toolkit provides an emulation environment that allows developers to run their existing unmodified Windows games on the Mac and quickly evaluate how well the game would run on Mac OS before writing any code. A beta version of the toolkit is available for download on the Apple developer website. Apple is also offering developers a new metal shader converter that simplifies the process of converting a Windows game shaders and graphics codes to run on Mac with Apple Silicon. Um, Apple says the toolkit and converter significantly reduces the total development time required to port games to Mac from months to just a few days. Developers interested in porting games to uh, porting Windows games to Mac can watch Apple's series of bringing your games to Mac videos for more detail. Uh, Apple also uh, has a page on its own website outlining various gaming technologies and tools available for developers. Apple appears to be increasing its commitment to high-end gaming with the Mac. For example, macOS Sonoma features a new game mode that temporarily prioritizes CPU and GPU performances for gaming. Uh, game mode also lowers AirPod audio latency and reduces input latency with popular third-party controllers. Um, macOS Sonoma is also set to release later this year. So I watched uh, Dave 2D's <laughs> video on this. Yeah. It's a very good video on it. It's, it's, he's just kind of talking about it. Uh, he said he was uh, leaving. Uh, I'm trying to log into my developer account right now. Uh, he he was leaving uh, the developer conference, and on the flight, he saw somebody with a MacBook playing Cyberpunk, and he was yes. like, "Oh, that's cool. That guy's playing Cyberpunk." Wait, how is he yeah. playing Cyberpunk on a Mac? Apparently, this uh, converter thing, like uh, to allow games to the, play the developer toolkit. Yeah. yeah, you can just take a game and put it in that. And then you have it. So technically, yes. Uh, I watched the Linus Tech Tips video on this, and they did take they did get access to developer toolkit because if you have an Apple developer account, you can just get it. Mm -hmm. um, and I do, I think. And they were able to upload. I don't. I don't know like all the ins and outs of it. They were basically able to upload a couple of Windows games into the developer toolkit. And some of them worked, some of them didn't. Yeah. They, There's like they, varying they, they levels didn't... of success. So, so it's not like you're going to port Cyberpunk and it's just going to... It's just going to work. It yeah. will be weird. It's yeah, But it, it does work. It's a step in the right direction. Mm -hmm. It's a step towards giving Apple their own equivalent to Valve's Proton, which can run Windows games on a Linux OS. So it's one step closer to that. Yeah. Um, this in conjunction with, I put it I put it in the keep, but we can talk about it now. Kojima coming out and saying Death Stranding is now available for Mac OS with Apple Silicon. Uh, Apple seems to finally being, uh, Apple seems to finally be serious about gaming. We will see how long this lasts. Well, yeah, it, it seems like, Koji Kojima was in the the, yeah. the the movie that was the Worldwide Developer Conference. Yeah. Uh, they just cut to him. I was like, what the fuck is he doing? Yeah. And then he said, hey, I'm really impressed with what Apple's got going on. You can just play Death Stranding now. Yeah. And I was like, something. I think yeah. he's just an Apple fan. Yeah. I don't think he actually is like that impressed with it. <laughs> um, 
But if Death Stranding can be ported over that easily, I mean, yeah, something they're doing something. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I mean, Apple has historically not been very gamer friendly. Yeah. Uh, especially for developers, uh, they, they don't really make it worth the developers time no. to, to port stuff. But if I mean, this is getting one step I mean, closer. We're it, it's been a slow trickle. You know, I think I, it's been rumored that Steve Jobs didn't like didn't think highly of video games. He didn't really care if video games were on their platform or not. Mm. Um, but like we've seen, especially through like Apple TV and iOS, you know, they allow you to use Xbox controllers and PlayStation controllers with those systems. So that was step one. Step two was, I think converting over to Apple Silicon was a big shift for them because they were able to do more with that than they yeah. could with the Intel processors. And then you get Resident Evil Village and then you get, Kojima, who's yeah. like the most respected man in gaming, Jeff Keighley's best friend. I don't know if you know that. Uh, come out and saying like, "Hey, this is a good thing. Uh, Apple Silicon is great for gaming." Here's Death Stranding. Like that's the next step. And then this game developer toolkit is the next step. So slowly but surely, like Mac is not going to be not going to compete with Windows. Yeah, but it could it could blow Linux gaming out of the water if oh, they yeah. stay with it and if they're consistent with it. I, I mean, this thing is insanely powerful, the thing that I have in my lap yeah. right now, this pair book. Uh, but, I, I mean, I want to play around with this uh, uh, developer toolkit yeah. thing. I want to see how, just how easy it is to get games running on here because there it would be amazing to just, yeah. to just be able to have this little thing. I mean, there's no laptop that is as, uh, like, convenient as, as this thing because yeah. of how, you know, slim and, and 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 you know like the build quality and everything yeah. is just incredible on this thing the only downside is i can't play a game on here right um but if it's as simple as just converting an exe then then maybe we're on to something even if i gotta play it at freaking 720p yeah. i don't care i mean it's not as simple as that but it, again it's the step in the right direction and once once this has been out for a while i think you're gonna see some homebrew shit I mean, like, yo, yeah, for sure. Or, or, or ways to, I mean, I tried really hard to try to get Valorant to run on here one, one night. And, uh, yeah. there are crazy workarounds. Uh, but I guess those workarounds are going to be a little bit easier. Yeah. Now. It is really cool to open up steam and actually be able to download a game. When you see a game that works on Mac, you're like, Oh my God, I can play this on yeah. Mac with my cloud save and everything. So anyway, uh, I think that's it. Okay. There's nothing else here that we really need to talk about, right? Not really. Okay. Uh, let's uh, do this guy then. All right. Quit of the week! Quit of the week! Quit of the week! Because tonight will be the night and I will fall for you. <laughs> this is the official Xbox account. The there you day go. they announced the black Xbox. Tweeting a picture of it with an emo haircut for some reason. Yes. And uh, then and then they wrote that. Yes. Because tonight will be okay. Whatever. Yeah, because it's um secondhand serenade song Fall for You. Yes. I Googled it. Oh, I so, didn't I, I you didn't know? I no, I didn't I didn't listen to Secondhand Serenade. I listened to cool music. I didn't know the name of the song, but I know the <laughs> meme. And I knew the song. Yeah. From my emo days. I didn't I didn't really have like an emo phase. I just I wanted music that sounded tough. Mm. And a a lot of emo music didn't sound tough, but there's a lot of emo music that did. Yes. You know? Yes. It was hard to f differentiate. Mm -hmm. uh, great. We trash. Thanks for the prime. Appreciate you. All right. We're going to talk to you guys real Yes. Quick. Starting with people who left comments on last week's Wolf Den Podcast over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Den Podcast. Actually, it was two weekends ago. Oh, yes. Two weeks ago. Uh, We got, what do we got here? We got Etre, who says, hey, Wolf Bros, I have a question. I see that there is a snake figure and unicorn Doom Slayer figure still in their packaging next to Will. How do you guys determine what figures to keep in the packaging and what to take out? I'm consistently conflicted on this with my own figures. So, I mean, you keep, these are yours. Yeah. yeah. I have nowhere to put them. Okay. So... That is why they're in the packaging. Okay. It seemed more convenient to have them in the packaging because they're rectangles. Right. Um, I I collect action figures fairly regularly, and I am an open box collector. I am usually that. I prefer to open box uh, collect my figures because 
uh, two reasons. One, boxes take up a shocking amount of room. Yeah. You don't realize until you take the figures out. But boxes take up a lot of room. And you could fit more figures on a display case or on a shelf if they're not in the box. The second reason is because they're toys and they're meant to be played with. Uh, so the reason why these are in the box is because they were in storage in my apartment, like right. stacked on top of each other. And I mean, it's just easier to have them like yeah, that. Yeah. Then on the move over here, they were in a box. Yeah. Boxes in a box. It was easier to have it that way. Yeah. So I just never took them out. And I don't know where to put them now if I take them out. Yeah. So. I think it, it's hard to determine. Uh, but if I think I know the toy is going to be valuable or if I really like the toy and I buy a double of it, I'll keep it in the box. But I rarely keep anything in the box anymore. Yeah. It all gets opened and I look at it and go, oh, this is cool. It goes in the display case and I walk away. Yeah, I mean, I like to collect stuff, but also, like, I'm never going to sell these things. So, yeah. they're, it's for me. Yeah. It's for however I decide I want to exactly. have it. Yeah. Um, Zach says, I think Bob just sucks at Splatoon, which is I, fine. That could be true. I could suck at something and also think it's bad. Yeah. How about that? Also, you could suck at something and think it's good. True. Mm -hmm. uh, Nick Molnar says, let me preface this with, uh, with a have literally never owned a PlayStation, but their ecosystem of VR and handheld gets me intrigued. I've always been a Nintendo guy. Also, I've had an Xbox for when I want to play games not designed for kids. Xbox and Nintendo seem very stale at the moment. If Starlink drops all buggy and sucks, I guess he means Starfield, I'm selling my Xbox Series X for a PlayStation 5. It's an interesting take on it. Um... Yeah, I mean, if you're outside of the PlayStation ecosystem and then you see that event that they just had with all that cool stuff, yeah, I could see you wanting yeah. to dive into it. But keep in mind, a lot of that stuff is releasing for Xbox too. Yeah. <laughs> so, so don't get too upset. Yeah. Um, Melon says, give that grill slash barbecue discussion, given that grill slash barbecue discussion, y'all might just... Be the right brothers to settle a long-standing debate I've had with my friends. Oh, God, here we go. <laughs> Is a hallway considered a room in... No. A room in your house or just a space that connects rooms without being considered a room itself? Specifically, the hallway hall, not a dining hall or Carnegie Hall type hall. Yes. A hallway is not a room in the house. No. It no is... way in hell is, does it count as a room. No. Uh, Sounds like one of your friends is just trying to make their house seem bigger than it yeah. is. Yeah. What would I, I guess you consider it a hallway? Yeah. Because like a room like is a place you go to and like you can sit. Like the entryway of the house is not yeah. a room. It's the entry. It's part of a different room. Yeah. You know, it's part of the living room if that's yeah. where your door is. You know. Uh. Again, yeah, when I got this house. They didn't list the hallways. Yeah, you know that would have been that. You know that would have. In, and trust me, that when they sell a house, they want to tell you that there's as yeah. many rooms as possible because they yeah. want to drive the price up. Anyway, hope that listen. That yeah. better settle that. Uh, Chris Listenfelt says, "Instant like just for the Wild Wild West Jam." I forgot we did that. <laughs> Always. Uh. Davey is cinema says, I think valve is okay with emulators being on their platform. If the company who the emulator belongs to can fight the legal gray area. So you mean the dolphin developers, right? Valve doesn't want to get legally involved. However, unlike Apple will give emulator devs a fighting chance, not just shut them down. Yeah, I'm with you. Yeah. Uh, I see that. It's a little disappointing that they won't push a little harder. Yeah. Uh, but you're right. At least they're, giving more than other companies like yeah. microsoft or 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 apple apple won't give you anything they, yeah. they just don't want anything to do with yeah you. microsoft gives a little bit more but still seems like they're they want nothing to do with you either uh valve uh seems seems to be the most uh cooperative but yeah. it's still not enough in my opinion all right now we're in the chat yes how you guys doing got here right. late have you seen the RG Nano? Oh, yeah, I have. Not only does it stain your eyes, but also your hands. What? Oh, really? What? I have seen it. I am getting mine very soon. 
Uh, I just requested one. Okay. Um, sixty bucks. Are you saying the the friggin' uh, uh, case, it, like like the like the die is is staining? I guess. I've been looking for a small emulator like that. I want to put it in a Game Boy. Ooh, I think that that would be cool to have a, something yeah. like that, but in a Game Boy shell. Um, strain, Bob, strain. Oh, it strains your hands. Oh. Uh, not only does it strain your eyes. Yeah, the screen is like really small. So that's I was thinking of getting two RG Nanos and one to put in a Game Boy, but the screen is even smaller than right. a Game Boy color screen, yeah. which is very small. Yeah. Um, Bob, did you see the Logitech G Cloud is killing all blues mics? What? Except the yet? Oh, oh I'm, no, no, why no. did I say G Cloud? I can't read. Bob, did you see that Logitech is killing all of Blue's mics except the Yeti and the Snowball? They're rebranding those under Logitech G. It's a shame because mics like the Baby Bottle and other XLR mics were really good. It's super dumb. That is dumb. I was thinking about this because yeah. they have the Logitech. Uh, they have a Logitech mic that is a competitor to the SM7B yeah. that looks really cool. Yeah. And I almost bought it. The Beacon. I th- no, the Beacon is a different. I don't know. But that looked really cool. And apparently it sounds really cool. But Logitech owns Blue now, the mic yeah. company. And Blue is famous for the Yeti, but they do have a lot of really great XLR mics. Yes. Yes. Uh, I, that are expensive. I think they see where the market's going, and the Yeti and the Snowball are popular amongst, you know, the streaming crowd. And Logitech is putting all their eggs in that basket, not the high end audio market that Shore and Audio Technica and Rode are in. I think that they should have Logitech be the consumer brand, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, give me a USB mic. Yeah. Give me a USB mic. Give me a Yeti. Like, a Yeti is good for like conference calls. That makes yeah. sense for Logitech. It should be the Logitech Yeti. Yeah. But blue should be the higher end XLR stuff. All yeah. of that stuff should be under the blue label. What are their own Logitech, Logitech G, Astro, Streamlabs, Ultimate Ears, Jaybird, Astro, yeah, Jaybird and Mevo. I would understand if Logitech wanted to roll Astro into Logitech. Yeah. Astro, like I get that it's like a big gaming brand, but like I don't think having two gaming brands makes sense because Logitech yeah. is already like a gaming brand, and they make great. I actually like the lot like. I'm turned off by um, gaming headsets. Yeah. Um, I have three different headsets that I bounce between. Really two. I have two headsets that I bounce between. One of them now. So I had a Sennheiser, a Logitech, and an uh, 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 Sennheiser, Logitech, Steel Series. I right. bounced between those three. Steel Series for when I was gaming because it's got better bass and you could hear footsteps and stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh now I kind of don't use the Sennheiser too much anymore. I use the Logitech because that's a good all-around headset. Yeah. And I I think Logitech is a better all-around situation for audio than 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 something specifically made for gaming. Right. So when I'm like editing audio, I use the Logitech. Um have you heard of the McDonald's chicken nugget handheld, a $4 emulator machine? Yes. yes. That is a uh, Chinese only. Yeah. Uh, Tacky Udon has a good video on it. Yeah. Uh, and you can tell why it's $4 is because it's a crapshoot whether or not you're going to get one that works. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Bob, do you fix controllers? I ordered one from eBay for my NES Classic Mini and finally had time to try it out today. It, it, and it not working. The buttons aren't registering. Uh, nothing is happening. I was wondering if you could take a look at it and how much it would cost to do so. Or uh, if not, do you know someone who does? I don't know what I would do if I like picked up a controller that didn't work. Like I yeah. don't know where to start. With yeah. That, you know? I can take a controller and change the buttons. I can make it clicky and whatever, but I, if it's dead, I would be completely lost. Yeah. I mean, cause like controllers like that, it's literally just a board. Yeah. And like, if something's wrong with the board, you can't really like, yeah, it's usually that. fried. And then it's like, all right, yeah. now, now what do I do? Um, so yeah, I can't, I'm sorry. I can't help you. Yeah. Um, 
The baby bottle was an amazing mic for the price. The normal bottle was expensive but really good. That's talking about the the blue. Yeah, they blue like mics. they got expensive those Logitech mics. I was considering getting a blue mic. Yeah. Um because they do look really nice too. Yeah. They're very pretty looking. Uh do you have issues with the RG Ally crashing and restarting? Got a blue screen today. No, what are you doing with it? I just played <laughs> mine like two days ago. How is it compared to the Steam Deck now after it's been after you've used it for so long? I wish I used it more. Yeah. Um It's great. Um th- they serve different purposes, like uh I downloaded uh, Street Fighter and I just jumped into Dabble a little bit. Yeah. But I hear that the ROG Ally needs a lot of finagling to get Street Fighter to work right. Right. And the Steam Deck, it just you just hit download and play. Yeah. So I decided to play Street Fighter on the Steam Deck for mm-hmm. that reason, you know, because it just I would just get in. Um, uh, Resident Evil Four uh, seems to run really good on the ROG Ally just the way it is. So I was playing that on the ROG Ally. Uh, I can't play PlayStation uh, Plus Premium streaming. Like PlayStation Plus Premium streaming only works on PC. Okay. So it will not work on Steam Deck. So I played that on the ROG Ally. Okay. See what I'm saying? Like there's, it's not like I would opt to pick up the ROG Ally over the Steam Deck unless there's a reason. Got it. And vice versa. Yeah. So... I still don't really have like a good answer whether one is better than the other because mm-hmm. like they're for different things. For I mean, if you're willing to tinker around, uh, maybe the ally is a better all arounder. But uh, if you don't want to mess around, it's kind of up in the air that yeah. one might be worth messing. Around. One might have more stuff to mess around with than the other. Mm-hmm. Um, have you seen the news about the FTC? Claiming an injunction to block my... Yes, we yes, talked about we that talked about very, that very briefly Very briefly, because we had a lot going on. Um, Excited to see you and Wood at Too Many Games next week. Oh, yeah, I'm going to Too Many Games next week. That's next week? That's next week. It's next weekend, not this weekend, next week. Right. What's the live podcast going to be about this year? Oh, God, we... I don't know, dude. <laughs> I'm, we're not planning that far ahead. Uh, but, yes, we're doing a Nintendo live podcast at Too Many Games in uh, Pennsylvania. Also, I'm gonna I'm doing a signing. I'm gonna bring little trinkets. Oh, there I'm you gonna go. Three D print a, br- a bunch of little trinkets to give away for, yeah, to the first couple of people who come to the signing. So, come please. Since the Allies release, I've seen so many Steam Deck ads because only now do they feel they have competition. I think they just have a lot now. Yeah. You know what? Here's some news for you. Remember the Ein Loki? You remember the Ein yes, Odin? Yes. The Loki is the Windows version. I just decided to look at my emails because I pre-ordered one. And I was like, where the fuck is everybody's getting theirs? Yeah. Where's mine? Uh, I looked at my emails and I saw that I pre-ordered one for my old address. Oh. So I was like, oh God. I emailed them and I was like, can I change the address? And they said, yes, but you have two pre-orders and both of them are discontinued or not making those. So make them something else. So I looked, so I I I I went to their website and I, I'm not I, I closed Discord, so I'm not gonna show mm-hmm. this to the to the audience, but I'll show it to you. Loki Zero, Loki Mini Pro, Loki, Loki Max. Pick one. Which one did I was, you I was like, where did these come from? Yeah. There were a lot when I pre-ordered it. Now I'm like I sat there for like a half an hour trying to figure out which was the which is the one that I want. Yeah. So apparently one of the ones I pre-ordered was an Intel version. They're not making Intel anymore. Okay. They're only making AMD. Okay. So I was like, okay, then give me the AMD one. And then I had a second pre-order that I thought was just one pre-order. Also, this is now the second time I am chain I got something canceled on me. Yeah. So that's three Ein devices that canceled a pre-order on me. Mm-hmm. Because they decided they don't want to make them anymore. Even though they have four Lokis that are coming out. Yeah. I don't remember what I ended up with. Hold on. I, 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 <laughs> after I decided all that. I, after all that, I decided I'm getting two yeah. that still have not shipped. There is one that shipped, but it's like $800. And I'm not spending $800. Yeah. Just to say, yeah, it's good. It's got to be amazing or 
really really horrible to make to, to, yeah. to make for a good video um i'm looking at my emails here we go i have decided on the loki zero and the loki mini pro okay so that's it that's where i'm getting because both of them are like one i think the loki zero is like really cheap it's like 250 so yeah. it's a windows handheld for 250 dollars. that's pretty cool yeah and the other one is i think 350 and it seems more like a it'll be more capable of stuff yeah. which is also pretty cheap i definitely did not need to but uh why not? It'd be an interesting comparison, yeah. I think. All right. Fine is going to be a flash in the pan company because they're going to skew themselves to death. I'm really disappointed because the Odin was so good. Yeah. And I thought that we finally had something in in, in emulation, and then yeah. they, and and now they're skewing themselves into the ground, as you say. I'm starting to plan a trip to New York City for the first time to visit some museums and sightsee. What part of town should I stay in? In New York? Uh, uh, lower to midtown Manhattan. Yeah. Uh, Penn Station or lower. Yeah. Is what I would say. Uh, and then you're good. That's it. People stayed in like Soho and like near Chinatown and had a good time. And yeah. And that's, that's... That's fine too. That's good. Yeah. Um. Yeah. All right. That's it. Thanks for hanging out. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolfden Podcast is every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash Wolfden. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolfden Podcast. So you can go and check us out over there on demand whenever you want. If you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you can do that as well. We're also an audio podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, and uh, every other audio podcast website available. But no matter where you get your podcast from, folks, please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us because that helps us with placement on all of those respective platforms. Uh, hey, here's a wacky and a wild one. Ham and Cheddar is streaming with Jordan Fringe. They're doing a Nickelodeon tier list. Okay. Uh, I will see you all on Thursday. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the 8-bit do uh, N64 wireless controller mod. Ooh. Because I just got that. Today. Yes. So I think that's what I'm going to do. Uh, so I'll do that on Thursday. I'll see you over here on Twitch. I also have a video coming out about the Project Q and PlayStation streaming. Thank you very much. We'll see you all later. Bye. Bye. Say hello to Ham and Jordan.